It's the 302nd consecutive sellout at Memorial Stadium in Lincoln for today's matchup in the Big 12, the Cyclones and Cornhuskers, presented in Phillips HD. Today, for the 302nd consecutive home game, a sellout crowd of Nebraska Cornhusker fans will take part in a great American fall tradition. Saturday afternoon, Big 12 college football in beautiful Lincoln, Nebraska. The band is playing. The fans are cheering. And the teams are prepared to battle. The visiting Iowa State Cyclones feature running back Alexander Robinson and always dangerous quarterback Austin Arnaud. You gotta be willing to pay the price for things that are worth well. Nebraska has the best pass defense of the Big 12 and feature a one-man wrecking crew and Endomacon Sue. Husker running back Roy Hellu Jr. can change the course of a game as quickly as he can change direction on the turn. Iowa State and Nebraska. A great tradition continues in Lincoln. College Football Saturday kicks off now. There is nothing quite like a classic fall football Saturday in Lincoln, and that's what we've got today. A matchup of two different styles of quarterbacks scrambling Austin Arnod of the Cyclones, Zach Lee, the pocket pastor for the Huskers. Lincoln, Nebraska is the site. Big 12 College Football Saturday presented by Phillips HD is today Iowa State on the road taking on the Nebraska Cornhuskers. Hi, everybody. Joel Myers alongside Dave Lapman. Welcome to Lincoln, where the Huskers are trying to bounce back. A severe disappointment for their fans last week, a loss to Texas Tech, and they did not capitalize on their opportunities, David, offensively. Very inconsistent offensively, Joel. Sometimes it was the quarterback. Sometimes an offensive lineman made a mental error and missed a block. Sometimes the receiver ran a wrong route or dropped the football. You can't have nine or ten guys operating. It has to be 11 players operating more efficiently, more consistently. But one player that's operated very well for Nebraska so far this year, Roy Hellu Jr. Unbelievable, 103 yards a game, second in the conference, 18th in the country. He's up to about 225 now. He really brings a little bit more thump, punishes people. He's very explosive, gives maximum effort every single snap. He is a slashing type running back, also a very accomplished receiver. Could play the wideout position, runs routes so well. Well, it may surprise some people, but going into the matchup today, the best ground game of the Big 12, that of the Cyclones of Iowa State. And the league's leading rusher, the Cyclones' Alexander Robinson. Alexander Robinson has been a Mr. Everything running back for Iowa State. But he's fighting a severe groin problem. It's been bothering from the last month. When he's not in class, he's in the training room getting rehabilitation and treatment. How effective will he be this afternoon? They really need him because he is a sure-handed back in the receiving game. And as you can see, an outstanding running back with tremendous vision, patience. Without him, that's a severe, severe blow. Hopefully, he'll be able to go the entire game today. But on the other hand, Nebraska holding the opposition on less than 100 yards over the last five games on the ground. Well, Iowa State's Jesse Smith comes in leading the Big 12 in stops. And Dominican Sue, one of the great linemen of the country, going for the Huskers. And we'll have more on the All-American candidate when we come back in Phillips HD. College football Saturday continues in Lincoln, Nebraska. It is consecutive sellout number 302 today at Memorial Stadium. It started back on November 3rd, 1962. And Bob Devaney's first year's head coach. Would he have loved to have this guy playing on the defensive line for him? And Dominican Sue Dave is one of the best linemen we've seen in many, many years in college football. No question, Joel. He's what I call a genetic phenomenon. He's a rare blend of athleticism and power. He's got very disruptive short space explosion. And he can close on a quarterback like a linebacker. In fact, he's got a lot of linebacker athletic ability in a 300-pound body. He can play anywhere on the football field. You can't man him up. He's got great feet, tremendous hands. That's just instincts right there. Instead of twisting on the tackle twist, he reads the quarterback's eyes and picks it off. Huskers coming onto the field. It's an emotional scene here in Lincoln as we head downstairs to Jim Knox. Knoxie. Right, Joel, very emotional right here. You see as the Husk Cornhuskers are about to come down the red astroturf. The fans are lined up. Here comes Coach Bo Pelini as he leads his team out on the field. We're going to let everybody listen in. Very emotional as they take the field in front of 85,000 plus. Here he comes rallying his troops. And here 
come the Cornhuskers all united as they get set to take on the Iowa State Cyclones. College football Saturday continues in a moment after this quick timeout. There are certain must-sees we'll talk about through the course of the contest. Right now, we must talk to Jim Knox. Knoxie. All right, thank you. Coach, I tell you what, really tough environment to play in, especially if you don't have two of your top players. Give us the latest on quarterback Austin Arnott and running back Alexander Robinson. Alexander's not dressed out, and Austin will be available in case we need him. We, we got our other guys in there. We'll play as a football team. We're ready to go. So both your top players That's right correct. now out. How do you win it here in Nebraska? As a team. All right, congratulations. Good. Dave, huge blows. Yeah, massive. I mean, not having Robinson, the leading rusher in the conference, 15th in the nation, Austin Arnott has a bruised hand on the throwing hand. So that, that swelling is what's preventing him from gripping the football and throwing with accuracy. Well, a chilly day. They expected it to be clear. Got cloudy about two hours ago. So instead of the mid-50s, 44 degrees, humidity fairly high. And we could see some precipitation before the end of the afternoon. Well, you know Robinson was, is just absolutely pressed fallen that he's not being able to play in this football game. And that means Jeremiah Schwartz, 5'11", 232-pound freshman, who's a downhill runner, loves contact, has great contact balance. He'll be the guy today running the football. Yeah, the guy that's under the spotlight at Iowa's day, Grant Mahoney, the place kicker, gets into it. High end over ender over to the far side, Niles Paul. The wide receiver, and we are underway. Past the 20, good block to the 25, and breaks a tackle all the way out to the 35-yard line. Good field position as A.J. Klein made the stop on special teams play. Now, yeah, a lot of speculation that we talked about it earlier in the pregame show. The junior from San Francisco, City College of San Francisco transfer. Zach Lee struggled last week. Longest pass is dump off. 27 yards to Hallu on a screen pass longest downfield only 10 yards but he is going to be their starter hello in the backfield they're averaging about 150 yards a game of the ground hello gets 103 of that and sliding off the left tackle he's got it up to the 38 39 lost the football right away wow. and iowa state's got it wow coming away with it Kennard banks the d-back so right away they strip it from hello and a huge break early for the Cyclones if they can make the most of it. And that's exactly what they needed to have happen. Iowa State looking for takeaways. A big part of this football game. And Hella just gets gang tackled and loses sight and control of the football. Ball security is big. Banks falls on top of it, giving Iowa State a short field. This will help when you're down your starting quarterback and number one rusher in the Big 12. Short fields are going to be what the doctor ordered today. First career start, Jerome Titter, redshirt freshman from San Antonio's Lee High School. And taking it over to the left side, Jeremiah Schwartz, another redshirt freshman from Orlando. So guys with very little experience all of a sudden. In the spotlight for Iowa State, Jerome Tiller. Now he did play last week when Arnott had his hand injured. Right. Uh, he ran for a career best 74 yards, had a 20-yard touchdown run. He's a better, his wheels are better than his throwing right now. Exactly. Not that he doesn't have a good arm, Dave, but he's got very little experience repetition-wise in the passing game. Second and eight from the 37 of Nebraska. Right side of the field trips. And Tiller dropped by his wideout. Josh Lenz couldn't help him out on that side. Philip Dillard, Dillard was on the coverage, but Lenz, a very catchable ball, another true first-year freshman. Look at the Phillips HD starting lineup. Reggie Stevens, man in the middle. He's a four-year starter at center from Rolla, Texas. Robinson out. Jeremiah Schwartz in. So pressure now on Hamilton and also Jake Williams. Their senior wide receivers to help out the young quarterback. Big third down early for Iowa State. Lens is the motion man. Showing good mobility. Tiller needs some help. And he won't get the first down going out of bounds at about the 35. Let's see where they spot him. So a stop for the Huskers. Jared Crick hustling over there. Also, Philip Diller. 
And defensively, our Phillips HD starting 11 for the Huskers. As good a front four as you're going to see in college football. Absolutely. Rick leads them in sacks. Dillard very involved early, the senior from Tulsa. And the secondary, Denard has been a nice story for them. He has started the last couple. Started two weeks ago at Mizzou, and he's moved up into the starting lineup. Now, Mahoney has missed six of his last 12. He's had problems. They say it started with Kansas, not the Kansas State blocked extra point. 52-yard field goal try Grant Mahoney. Does he have enough on it? Yes. yes! What a pick-me-up for Iowa State for a guy that has really struggled lately, the sophomore from Marlin, Iowa. Joel, he is one of seven kickers in the country that have hit multiple field goals of 50 yards or more, and he does it again. Only seven guys have done this more than once in the country, and he puts a 52-yarder up and puts Iowa State on the board first. lead for Iowa State in a stadium they haven't won in since 1977. Well, the fumble set it all up. And Roy Hello with only the fourth fumble of the season this year for Nebraska. That they've lost, yeah. And, and this, I'll tell you what, Kennard Banks is involved in the fourth fumble as well as Jesse Smith, the leading tackler. He wraps up and rips the ball out of there. And Kennard Banks, that's an alert football player. He had an idea it was going to be on the ground. He found it, recovered it. Big, big takeaway. They've uh, forced some turnovers. I mean, they're 14th in the nation. 17 takeaways. That's pretty nice. I mean, that'll that'll keep you and help you win, in a lot of football games and help you win them as well. Well, Grant Mahoney and I think I said Marlon, but Mary and I will. Grant Mahoney with a pick me up for his squad, a 52-yard field goal. Kicks it away once again. It is going to be Tim Marlowe this time. Couple of yards into the end zone. Behind Niles Paul leading the way, and he spun around and dropped down. The coverage downfield, Bo Blankenship with A.J. Klein. Then our Phillips HD starting 11. Man, very similar. It's a senior center in his third year as a starter, Jacob Hickman, who does a good job up front for a group that has had some question marks around him, the offensive line. That was the first lost fumble of the season for Roy Hallou Jr. They've got experience at the wide receiver position. Got a good one, Mike McNeil out of Kirkwood High School in St. Louis who tied in their junior. He's got 47 career catches. So here go the Huskers trailing at their own 26. And a quick one on the outside goes to Niles Paul. So the completion can make it. The other wide receiver, Brandon Kenny, 84, not 24. As we look at things defensively, well, Patrick Neals moved into the starting lineup, the sophomore from West Des Moines against Kansas State. He has helped out. Jesse Smith leads the Big 12 and stops. Brent Banks with a big play early, the senior from Boynton Beach, Florida. They've got experience in the secondary. Now plenty of time, and the same target, Brandon Kenny, the sophomore from Kansas City. And he's got a first down in front of Kennard Banks on that play. Nice job by Sean Watson calling quick passes. Get the ball out of the quarterback's hand immediately. Little pivot route to the sideline, executed exceptionally well. Tremendous route by Kinney. The ball is right on the money from the quarterback. And again, Sean Watson, three-step, I mean, the ball's out of there. It's a quick route, and get the quarterback's confidence built up. So from the 40, and quarterback keeper. That was a quarterback, what was it, a zone read, Dave? He takes it for three. So keys now coming in for Nebraska. Well, the first thing they want to do is get their ground game going. You know, which team is going to run the football effectively enough and then play action pass on top of that? that Nebraska hasn't done it. Iowa State has. They want to make sure that reverses. And then red zone. Last week against Texas Tech, Nebraska really struggled in the red zone offensively, converting only 40% of the time. They allowed uh, Texas Tech to go 80%. Lee out of the edge. Now Paul this time. And he's got it. As Paul takes it up to the 49 on second down. Short of the first down by a yard, bumped out by David Sims. For Iowa State, they want to be plus two in this football game. They're already plus one, and they got three points off of that takeaway. Uh, Nebraska, they're only allowed seven points off of the turnovers all year. That one more, it gives them two more scoring opportunities and two fewer for Nebraska on that takeaway deal. And then the kicking game. We talked about Grant Mahoney struggling. Well, he hit a 52 yarder, that'll help him. And Mike Grant with a punter. He's never had a punt block in his career. He's going to have to dictate field position for Iowa State today. Short field, long field. 80 yard, yard and a half, short side option pitch for his career. Carry Trey Robinson. Good job. The 
true freshman from the Fort Worth suburb of Euless, Texas. At 6'1", 215, first career carry, and a first down. They run the option to the short side of the field, and it's executed exceptionally well. Good read, get the football to the, to the pitch man, good blocking on the perimeter, tight end doing a nice job there, Drew Young. Watch him, number 49, the red jersey, Drew Young. There's the receiver kicking out, Drew Young inside, sustaining his block, nice effort. Also, give a little uh, credit to those wide eyes. Trey Robinson weaves his way down to the 40, gain of four. Frank Guerin, weak side linebacker, on the hit. Well, you see Jacob Hickman right there. But look at that right foot again. He did. He was in a boot yesterday. He stood next to the offensive line coach Barney Cotton. Never took a snap. He's got a bad ankle sprain, and they put the boot on for precaution. And he told me, you know, I, I'm definitely playing. This kid's played guard, tackle, center. Extremely intelligent. Makes all the calls. They have to have Hickman in there. His 30th career start. Design run. Zach Lee goes absolutely nowhere. Garen and Smith combining for that hit. Now it's going to be third, kind of a mid-range play. Third and about four for Nebraska, the Iowa State 38. It's always strange, though, Dave, when we come here, and Nebraska's got, so far this season, 233 yards a game throwing the football and 152 on the ground. It yeah. just doesn't seem like Nebraska football. And, and this is more like Nebraska football, though. You know, early in the game, you saw the quarterback under center. You saw a fullback, high formation, first play of the game, running a little bit of power football. Now they're back in the gun. Need four, four and a half yards for the first down. It's third down, that's why they're in the gun. Pelu chipping away in the backfield, lead oh. too tall. And he had Mike McNeil, his tight end, wide open. Stepped up in the pocket, tried to get his mechanics right, but did not have very good mechanics transferring his weight and throwing that football. As a result, the ball sailed on him. It all starts with your feet. You have to have proper footwork to be able to throw the football accurately. And Zach didn't that time. The ball sailed on him. Alex Henry in to punt it away with a 40-yard average. Josh Len, the man there in the Iowa State 10-yard line. But he won't get close to it. Now going to get it out of bounds. Yes. Yes. What a punch. Alex Henry, the junior from Omaha, did exactly what Bo Pelini wanted in that situation. Anything inside the 10 would have been perfect. And he got it to backpedal from the one out of bounds of the two. And sometimes field turf, the ball will bounce straight up, just like this on field turf. What a great punt with a little backspin. American Airlines takes us back to October 1st, 2005 at Memorial Stadium, the matchup between these two teams. It was tied at 13, end of regulation. Iowa State's Greg Coleman, 10-yard touchdown run. Now Nebraska's Corey Ross, as Dan McCartney says, just go for one, play it safe. Corey Ross, he's in. It's all even. Second overtime, though, Nebraska's Zach Taylor. It's Corey Ross again on the receiving end. 10-yard touchdown. And Iowa State, number 23 in the nation at the time. They lost at Nebraska in double overtime, 27-20. So they haven't won here since 77. They've had some good close ones recently. Now let's see if it continues today. 3-0 lead, Iowa State. Welcome back to Memorial Stadium. Trying out of their own two and out of their own end zone. And maybe a yard as Barry Turner, the defensive end, pushes back Jeremiah Schwartz, a redshirt freshman. He joined us just a couple of minutes ago. Starting quarterback Austin Arnott out. An injured right throwing hand. The junior from Ames accounts for 16 touchdowns. Also, the Big 12's leading rusher. Alexander Robinson, wow. five yards a game for the Big 12's best ground attack at 2:14 a contest. So, totally different story now for Iowa State in the first of two straight on the road. Schwartz straight up the gut to about the five. Denard came out of the secondary to push him back. On the low end, it was Asante, the strong safety. Well, now third down. Well, you know, without the one-two punch, quarterback running back and backed up against the best front four, arguably, in college football, and in my opinion, the best tackle tandem, Sue and Crick. What will they do on this third down? I would think they'd be rather conservative. I don't think you risk throwing the football and having Sue and Crick and that front four tee off on you. I think you'd be smart and punt it away. Tiller come into the game, only 26 throws. And out of the edge, he won't make it. Put down. 
by Sean Fisher. Two yards, almost three shy where he needed to go. And, and this is exactly what Carl Pelini and the Nebraska defense wanted to do. One, two, three, and out. Get the football right back to the offense on a short field. They're hoping that Nebraska will have half a field or less to negotiate. And the punter's going to have to punt out of his own end zone. And how much do you pressure the punter right here? Mike Brander, one of the best in the nation. Never had one blocked in his career. A wobbler, Paul on the run, and a good job to take it on the run. Barely tripped up, going down and out of bounds, where Nebraska's going to have it at the 42 of Iowa State, trailing by three. On the road or now at home. It's been that way for the last few weeks. Backwards pass, Hellu taking it around the corner. Short yardage as he is bolted out of bounds. Jesse Smith made sure that he was not going to get an extra yard out of that play. You know, that was a good job on the, on the pruner by Holt. Watch number 18 in the red jersey. Block, 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 sustain. Get the edge for Hellu. And it's, hello, Hellu. Going to run you out of bounds. That was one of the questions for Iowa State. Do they have, do they have enough speed to, to chase him down to the perimeter? A little bunch formation, the tight ends from Nebraska right there, changing the strength. Man, point of attack over to the right side. Now a header cutting it back for good yardage with a flag down, though, where you normally so, see a hold from the referee deep in the offensive backfield. And it will be. First down. You know, what, what Nebraska's going to try to do today, and they don't want to have the hold, the tight end bunch formation. They started on the left side, and they rolled, they traded the strength of the formation to the right. They're trying to outgap, outnumber Iowa State at the point of attack. And Iowa State does a decent job inside out pursuit, but the holding penalty nullified it. But we're going to see a lot of that today. A lot of three and four tight end formation for Nebraska trying to put on the big boy pads and out muscle Iowa State up front. Too many penalties for Nebraska, as you can see over the last couple of games. And now back to the midfield stripe. Little shovel pitch. Hello is going down from behind. He didn't realize the heat was coming. Man, it was Bailey Johnson, the junior from Homewood, Illinois. Now let's take a look now at our Lexus playbook, Dave. Let's take a look at this Nebraska tight end bunch formation. You know, they, 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 they did that on that play, the run play that uh, the holding penalty was called on. They have three or four tight ends on the same side of the formation. They can stay there or they can motion and they can trade the strength of the formation. And all they're trying to do is outflank and outgap Iowa State defensively, get one more hat at the point of attack than Iowa State can handle. Yeah, now Nebraska getting at least field goal range. Niles Paul making a mess. What about a first down? He's got it. Inside the 30, down to the 28. Brought down by Teron Benton. And broke that initial tackle about 10 yards upfield. So the junior wide receiver from Omaha, who had a career day at Missouri with six catches, 102 yards and a couple of touchdowns. Niles Paul with a big grab. Nice job finishing the play. Get the ball out to the perimeter. It's like, you know, like a long lateral. Get him in space. Beat Leonard Johnson. That was the key. To the 28 it goes. A little pick play. And that was a backwards pass. No. No. no They're it's, saying it's, it was even. Yeah. And it was dropped by Gorensky Gilliland. It was very close. It was a forward pass. If it's even or back, that's a lateral. This one, let's see where he throws it. And it goes up to, it, it's up to the 31-yard line. It's close. He's beyond the 31, Ooh. and the ball's tailing back. I think but back. you know what? What he did was he recovered it anyway, so it would have been about a yard difference. I don't know if they're going to well. look at it or not again, but it'll be about a yard difference in field position here if they do. A big story, though, Jacob Hickman is out of the game. We talked about the center with the bad right foot. He's out. Caputo is in the football game, the backup center. We'll have to see how that affects this game. Lee, option read, and he takes a shot. Lost the football. Smith's on top of it. Iowa State gets it back. What a pop by Leonard Johnson, the sophomore from Clearwater, Florida. He forced it, and now they're saying Smith did not recover it. It does, and Smith had a chance. It uh, does belong to Nebraska. A lot of times there's a tug of war that goes on down there. Strongest hands, wrists, and forearms wins. The guy that has it initially doesn't come up with it. He's very disappointed in Smith because he knew he had a shot at it, and he got, he got stomped a little bit. He's kind of trying to shake off that right arm and right hand. 
And again, at the bottom of the pile, a lot of stuff goes on. There's biting, scratching, kicking, clawing, because the ball's available. I mean, that's just a tremendous smack on Zach Lee. And now there's the tug of war at the bottom of the pile. Well, that's just one on one and stood the quarterback up and knocked the football out of his hands. That's good defense. Moving by the nose. That'll be costly. Yeah, and you can't listen to the quarterback. Offside by contact. Number 85, defense. Bailey Johnson. We already just made a big play. Now gives away five. Uh, watch the ball. The ball's right under your nose. Watch it. Move when the ball moves. Don't listen to the quarterback. Oh, you can't do that. The football never moves. See, Caputo's in there at number 58. He's 6'1", 270. Hickman, the, the, the star of the offensive line, is 6'4", 290. They have a different dynamic going at the center position. How, how, how will that affect the offensive line? Making calls, recognition, and communication. Third and about six. Lee a ton of time and finds it. He's got the tight end McNeil. He double clutched it and he had McNeil earlier. So he's got a first and goal down to the seven. Well, the key there, Joel, was when you run a crossing pattern like that, it takes time like you said. And the offensive line gave him a pocket to step up. Pumped it, stepped up, and then found his, his receiver separating on that crossing pattern. And he hit Mike McNeil, the very, very talented tight end, who is the, the best receiver of the football of the group of tight ends. Now two fumbles for Nebraska on only seven runs today on first and goal. Trey Robinson, the freshman, driven, and dives forward. They'll give him the three. Jesse Smith, boy, he's being blocked by the big lineman, Ricky Henry, the right guard, and still doesn't quit on the play on the low side. That's tenacity. You know, that, that's what Iowa State's defense is all about. They, they trust their eyes. They read their keys. They hit the right gap with the proper shoulder. This defensive football team isn't the biggest, isn't the fastest. And that's the poster man for it right there. Former walk-on. Now starter, now captain. That says it all. It'll be Robinson. He's in. Touchdown, Nebraska. So Trey Robinson with his first career carry earlier today and now his first career score. And Mike Caputo, the backup center, had a key block on that play. That's a good sign. Downhill Nebraska power football for the touchdown. Mike Caputo, former walk-on who you're talking about. A scholarship in August for him. Take a look at him come off the line of scrimmage, sustain, sustain, sustain the block, finish, fit and finish those blocks, touchdown. Nebraska Cornhuskers, team many picked to win the Big 12 North this year. On top for the first time today, 7-3 lead. Pass over to the far side, Kunata gets it, and it's going to be Leonard Johnson. It's inside his own end zone, laying over to the left side, closes in a hurry as he tried to bounce outside. And he's put down at about the 21-yard line by Graham Stoddard, a reserve linebacker. So Iowa State had a little room, as opposed to the last series when they started back at their own two, and especially when you consider they're starting a redshirt freshman quarterback right there, bringing them together from the sideline, Jerome Tiller at 6'3", and not even 200 pounds. Well, this game's going to boil down to which offensive and defensive line takes control of the line of scrimmage. You got to really admire Iowa State. They've been very consistent on the ground. They've averaged 190 to 240 yards a game for all seven, all six games coming into today. Will they be able to rush for those kind of numbers against this black shirt defense of Nebraska? They slide the tight end, Catlett in motion. Schwartz, nice little crease over to the left side for about five out to the 26. So the storyline going into the game. The top two running backs in the conference. Alexander Robinson, 105 a game. Helu, 103 a game. Robinson is out with an injury. Helu fumbles on his first carry of the day, and they've gone to Trey Robinson. So neither are factors, at least at this point of the contest. And the second and five for the 26. Schwartz. A tough two or three. He gets a couple out to the 28. First down marker, we remind you, is brought to you by Overstock.com. Your entire order ships for just $2.95 at Overstock.com. Overstock.com at home with the O. You know what's lost in, in college sports and pro sports, Dave, more than anything else, sportsmanship. And when you come to Lincoln, Nebraska, Memorial Stadium, 
it's just apparent. There's 85,000. A few minutes before the game, they welcomed Iowa State and they played their fight song. And the, the crowd, a sellout crowd, truly did welcome them. It's, and, it's one of the great places to watch college football. They understand their football, Joel, no doubt. Good call. A read by Tiller, and he's got the first down. It's only a year out of high school. This is his second season. Redshirt freshman. A good decision. He's run out by Alfonso Denard. Well, you're missing your starting quarterback and your best runner, so you have the backup at both positions do a nice job in the zone read. The relationship was good. The fake was good to, uh, to uh, Schwartz. Austin Arnod is basically a quarterback coach on the sideline now for his uh, compatriot. He's going to give him a lot of tips during the course of the game, things that you should be looking for. That was a nice read by Jerome Tiller. He definitely has some jackhammer feet. He's got some quicks. He'll keep it this time. Beats the man on the edge, or does he? Smart play. Got rid of it before he goes down and loses four or five on a sack. That is heads up. Eric Haig out of the secondary, the nickel back, a junior from Peoria, Arizona, on uh, the hustle play. He may be the most important player in Nebraska's defense because no matter what they do, if they play four wides, he can play in the nickel. If they substitute with a tight end, he can be, be physical enough to line up as a, as a linebacker. He's like that hybrid defensive back linebacker that they never have to sub off the field. Very, very versatile. You just saw Carl Polini, the defensive coordinator on the sideline. Tiller calls his own number again and takes it for about three out to the 37. Back to what you were talking about with Eric Haig, though. Carl Polini told us earlier this week, he goes, we asked him the one guy he couldn't afford to lose, and we automatically thought it was going to be um, Dominican Sue, uh, the best lineman in the country potentially. He said it's Eric Haig because of his versatility. Yeah, he's 6'2, 205 pounds. So he's a big defensive back, small linebacker. He's a hybrid. Carl Pelini has the perfect body type with the perfect football acumen to play that position, and he is instrumental. Third and six in a timeout of the field called defensively by Time Nebraska. Out. Nebraska it is their first of the half. It will be 30 seconds. 30 so 62 seconds. seconds left on the clock, and now it's up to actually it's 57 seconds on the clock with Nebraska by a four. And our fearless predictions are all presented by Phillips HD. And coming in, Dave, for Iowa State. Yeah, and this uh, five foot eight inch defensive back, James Smith, against Nebraska last year had 12 tackles very very involved he's having a great year he's a tremendous leader on this football team he's been around for a while he's been through the coaching changes he's some stability Philip Dillard here's a guy that didn't play that well last year had trouble learning the Pelini system they kind of gave up on him a little bit but he didn't he got in the doghouse but fought his way out of it Virginia Tech they put him in the football game, had a very physical game. His graph has been going nowhere but nowhere since then. He's a great story. Don't give up on yourself. The coaches didn't give up on him. Now he's playing a lot of tremendous snaps for Nebraska's defense. And now it's third and six. Ball at the 37. Oh, little and, early movement. Right. We remind you for more fearless predictions on every college football Five game. Snap, false start, number 72 offense. Five-yard penalty, still third down. A similar. Yeah, log on to FoxSports.com. Keyword is fearless. We'll talk about Diller a little bit later when he's out on the field. The defensive player for Iowa State, the weak side linebacker, a guy that didn't even play for Paul Rhodes in the first two games of the year, but he never stopped working. Right now, Joel, this is tough. You saw the left tackle jump. Crowd moves. You can't hear. Your only advantage is gone. You have to watch the ball and move when it moves like the defensive lineman. Third and 11. Room to roam. Ran out of room. And on his way down. Sue is there, but it was really Dijon Gomes who got to him first. So another tackle for a loss for Endomican Sue. Yeah, and he does this the entire game. He's he basically he's almost like the spy. I mean, he was back there mirroring every move of the quarterback because they have quarterback draw in their game plan with with the backup in there. Sue is almost like a quasi defensive tackle slash linebacker. Made the proper read and got involved. Brantner, with no pressure, gets out of beauty. Over to the boundary. Paul has no option. And you talk about well placed by a punter. Changing field position completely back to the Nebraska 14. Man, what a play. 
Don't forget about the hidden yardage in special teams. Yeah. Long field, short field. It's big. So Nebraska gets it back. Zach Lee ready to come back out with the offensive unit for the Huskers. The seven to three lead with 12 seconds left in the opening 15 minutes of play. And Nebraska capitalized on the first trip of the red zone. That's what killed them last week. Last week they were inside the 20 five times. So a potential 35 points. And they finished the game with 10. Right. Left a lot of points in the field in their red zone. Iowa State have left a lot of points in the field in their kicking game, but not today. It's instead of Trey Robinson, we had dump off over to the left side and Gilliland. Good yardage from Leander, Texas. Final snap of the first 15 minutes of play. Good for about nine. So an efficient start for Zach Lee, the junior quarterback from San Francisco in his first season as the Huskers starting quarterback. And he's got him up by four in a conference game at home. You're watching Big 12 College Football Saturday. It's all presented by Phillips HD. Honoring today, Nebraska's defensive lineman from the past who's going to the College Football Hall of Fame, Grant Wistrom, a two-time All-American up front for the Huskers. Two-time Defensive Player of the Year, an academic All-American, and just an incredible guy that had carried over to Sunday. St. Louis Rams should have never let him leave. He had a great run with the Seattle Seahawks, and while we were away, this was the presentation, and Dave, it was touching because Grant Western, first of all, he's lost a lot of his playing weight. He got real misty-eyed. You could tell he was touched. He was ready to cry. Yeah, it, it, you know, it means a lot to him. He loves the Nebraska fans. They love him. Just like Sue, Wistrom, tremendously quick first step. Starts with your feet, and then perfect hand placement at all times, and those unbelievable hands. Any athletic endeavor, hitting a baseball, shooting a basketball, pitching, whatever. Starts with your feet, ends with your hands. That's the same thing with offensive and defensive line play. Yeah, you can see, he was a punchy kid there, and now, as a man, he looks real good at the 25. It's a first down as we head downstairs to a new member of the College Football Hall of Fame. Noxie? All right, thank you, Joel. Here he is, Grant Wistrom. I mean, they just honored you right here on the field, but the, the big honoring goes on in New York in December. What's that like for you? Uh, very, very humbling. I mean, just to be a part of the, uh, the College Football Hall of Fame, wow. You know, but, you know, I, I get the honor, but it's a large part of it is getting to play with the group of guys. You know, they said we went 49 and 2 and won three national championships, and that didn't hurt anybody's resume. Yeah, when you played here at Nebraska, you were also a two time All American, 49 and 2, three national championships. What do you remember most about those years? Uh, the fans. You know, the fans are the, the greatest in college football here at, uh, at the University of Nebraska, and uh, it's just an honor to get to play in front of them for four years, and each time I get to come back, it's just like being back in the uniform all over again. What are you doing right now, Grant, after football? Uh, we own a uh, Prudential real estate agency in Grove, Oklahoma. I own part of a CrossFit gym in Springfield, Missouri, and I got two little kids, so it keeps me busy. There you go. But you still want to get out here, don't you? you, you we got to hold you back. You want to get back I on know. the field. <laughs> go out there and steal the 98 jersey and get back there at it. I appreciate it. Congratulations. Thanks, Noxie. And Sue is right now top five on the list, but you see who is up atop the list. For the Huskers all time, it's Grant Wister. There's Trey Robinson running into his own man. Otherwise, it could have gone for a lot more, but he ran into Ben Cotton. And he's got a first down with the flag down. Deep in the secondary over to the far side. See what happened on the perimeter. They were, as they were coming off up, as they were coming off the uh, off the line of scrimmage, Iowa State may have grabbed or let's see. Let's see what they called here. Nebraska's walking the wrong way. Yeah. Holding. Holding. Number 18, offense. Wow. 10 yard penalty, first down. Yeah, away on the opposite side of the field, mentally cold. Away from the play. I mean, he's not, he's 30 yards away from the point of attack. Why the heck would you come off the line of scrimmage and hold? And that's exactly what he's being asked. He's not even anywhere near the play. Why would he reach out and grab him like that? But Holt negated a huge, huge play. Tremendous block by Ricky Henry, got his defender on the ground. Here he is, way away from the point of attack, down below. He holds on the back side. So it's at the point of the infraction. It's still a first down for Nebraska as they go underneath. Gilliland trying to pick up extra. Instead of going the old north-south routine, tried to head a little bit over to the sideline. Probably cost him a couple. He gets four, though, out to the 48. And he's brought down by Ben. Well, that was great to see Jim Knox downstairs with Grant Wistrom. Obviously, a Midwesterner at heart in Oklahoma, in Springfield, Missouri. And played his college football here in Nebraska. 
Well, he'd be happy to be part of this front four. He had outstanding front fours. If he lined up at defensive end with Sue inside a defensive tackle, Manischewitz, how would you block that group? Second and six. Ball to the 48. Here comes the blitz off the edge, and Lee gets it out to Paul. He's got the first down. Boy, and Lee took a pop at the end of the play. It goes down to the 36, and he knew he was going to get it. David Sims on the stop. Well, Kennard Banks came on the blitz, and you're exactly right. It was on the front side. Watch the blitz come, and that's that's Banks who forced and recovered the fumble. And Zach Lee knew he was going to blow him up, and he courageously stood in there, took the hit, delivered a very accurate ball to Niles Paul. They were one man short in coverage out there because they decided to blitz the perimeter, a defensive back, blitz that quarterback, and Zach Lee went, went right where he vacated. Four straight completions for Lee. And it's Mendoza who made a catch earlier in the drive and making a miss. He only had two carries coming in the sophomore from Houston, Marcus Mendoza. You tell me. Roy Hellu fumbles on his first carry of the day. They're coming off a disappointing loss, Dave, offensively. We haven't seen him basically since, only as a decoy. And Robinson and Mendoza have been in the game. Well, Inexperienced guys. You have to wonder, he's fighting a stinger in his shoulder. You have to wonder if early on, is that one of the reasons that Hellu lost control of that football? Helu has had a had a pro injury problem himself. He hasn't been practicing every day of the week for the last few weeks as well because of that shoulder stinger. A gain of seven going back the other way. A little kick out screen and another first down as they go to mentally cold. The senior from San Diego and he's got it down to about the 22 dropped by James Smith. You know when when you have a situation where the blitz is coming again. The thing to do is run draws and screens. So run that alley screen. Look at the blocking in the perimeter by Mike McNeil, the tight end. He blocked two on the edge. That's a pretty good job allowing your compatriot to pick up the yards to move the chains. Good call, good execution. Good balance. 11 runs, 12 passes over the first 23 snaps timeout. for Nebraska. Iowa State. And Iowa State and caught it up. Half. Timeout here timeout. for defensive purposes. They needed on a drive that started all the way back at the Nebraska 14. A first down when we come back. And the Cyclones 22. Lincoln next week. We got a nice double header for you. Bill Land, Gary Reasons are going to have Missouri and Colorado in the morning. Real big Big 12 North game there. And then Kansas State will take on Oklahoma. Dave, we're going to be in Norman once again. Wide side option. Lee keeps it. And nothing there. Jesse Smith cutting him off after a gain of about a yard. The beginning of the season, Missouri, Kansas, and a lot of people felt it was going to be Nebraska winning the Big 12 North. But They've had some struggles recently offensively. Well, how about Kansas State? <laughs> That's the oh, surprise at 2-1. Yeah, leading, yeah, leading the Big 12 North. Kansas State has won a couple of Big 12 North games. Bo Pelini knows that it's a long season. It's far from over. He says we're, we're, not a, we're not a finished product. Got work to do, but don't rule them out because they have a championship caliber defense. Hellu's in there on a play fake. Use him as a decoy again. Dump it off the hold underneath. He battles for short yardage when he's popped by David Sims. They make it Gillen, rather, who took in the pass. So Sims pushes him out of bounds. Short game. We'll be on third and five. And we were just talking about the Big 12 North, Kansas State. They're in Norman, Oklahoma. We'll have them next week. Uh, uh, college football Saturday matchup. Kansas losing the game. Everybody thought they were going to win last week after they were down 24 to 3. Almost came back to win it. And Missouri, well, they've got a big one tonight, man. A tough one at home against Texas. And when you're Owen, you haven't won a Big 12 North game, that's a tough matchup to go against Texas. Lee is 6 of 6 so far on this series. And on the deflection, is it taken in? Wow. Still battled, and they say Sims has a pick and never hit the ground. David Sims comes away with it, the strong safety. He went for McNeil after it was deflected originally by Jesse Smith. So exactly. that was a volleyball. Jesse Smith's the one that started the whole thing. Jesse Smith got a nice drop from his linebacker position. The former walk-on scholarship captain now. He deflects it. Almost a great catch by McNeil. But boy, deflection never hits the ground. Ball's up, up, off the bodies, up, up, up. And it never hits the ground. Good That's call. just a great play by David Sims being alert, staying with the old tip drill. McNeil almost makes a marvelous catch off of Smith's tip. Then everybody tips it. It's, it's ping ponging around off of everybody. Helu can't make the play on it. And ultimately, Sims does. That's, that's the second takeaway.
for Iowa State. They're plus two right now in this Previous game. play is under further review. Well, they can review it uh, until midnight tonight, but that's an interception for David Zim. Never hit the ground. Never came close to hitting the ground. It just, just kind of ping-ponged around a few bodies down there. But the whole thing started with the ball slightly underthrown. As a result, Jesse Smith's able to get a chip on it. McNeil can't quite control it. Look at Iowa State converge on it. I mean, Cedric Johnson, David Sims like sharks in blood. And now the ball never hits the ground. It's, it, there's separation there. Never touches the ground. David Sims corrals it. That's a good job of the tip drill and staying focused and concentrating on the football. That's a heads up play. First interception of a Zach Lee pass since, well, better than a month ago. Their one point loss at Virginia Tech. Yeah, one thing they're looking at right here is when he caught the football, when Sims had control, was his right knee down. If it was, it negates all the return yardage, and they get the ball back inside the five-yard line. Let's watch Sims when he corrals the football and has control. Is the right knee down? It's not. No, I don't he think he doesn't have possession. It. He doesn't have if the ball the knee's not down. The field is confirmed. First down, Iowa State. And, and the first down with all the return yards, it doesn't come back inside the five. Good call. And that's a good job by the replay system. They wanted to make sure of two things. Was it an interception? Did the ball never hit the ground? No, it didn't. Okay, when, when Sims controlled the ball, was his right knee off the ground? Yes. So, Very close on that. Yeah, in both cases, though, they, they didn't overturn anything that was called on the field. No evidence to overturn it that was indisputable. So first to hell to fumble. And now the interception. Uh, the deflected pass. Jesse Smith started it all off. It's going to be Jeremiah Schwartz up to a, maybe the 20 for about three. And that is it. Philip Diller, the weak side linebacker, on top of the play. So Iowa State, leading rushing team of the Big 12, 214 a game. But they're missing Alexander Robinson. And he is the bread and butter guy. So he sets it all up, whether it's Schwartz coming off the bench or Bo Williams, maybe Blankenship, doesn't make any difference. You've you got to have your lead guy, and they don't. Going to be second and seven at the 20. Tiller out of the gun. Quick one. And a fastball and a good one to Marquise Hamilton, the senior from Oklahoma City. He's got a first down out to the 28. Well, in the first quarter, Iowa State rushed for 10 times for 19 yards. And Alexander Robinson leading the, the conference with 105 yards per game and hot on his heels, Helu with 103. And they both about the same average, 5.7, 5.8. They both Rush for six touchdowns. That's high for fourth in the conference. And one's not playing at all. And Helu seems to be a little bit limited physically in this football game. That was only the third pass attempt for Tiller with his first completion. Here comes the heat. Good job. Mobile quarterback, but it's coming back. Yeah. And it could have been a late hit as well on Diller taking the quarterback out after he was already on the chalk. Well, I think they're going to call a, tight, a takedown on Osimile. Big number 72. Holy. Number 72 offense. Yeah. 10 yard penalty. Repeat first down. He got his money's worth. Took him down and, and covered him up. You know, you, you look at you, there are takeaways, Joe, and there are takeaways. I want to talk about the two Iowa State takeaways after we take a look at what took place here on the edge. And watch. As, as he takes him inside, grabs, and turns him, takes him to the ground, falls on top of him. Hands outside the framework of the body, and then covered him up after he took him to the turf. You got to call that one. He's waiting for a, a count on the pin. From the 18, it's first down all over again. Tiller with a decent lane early throws it away in the direction of Hamilton. Sue, Sue put the hit on him. And Dominican Sue. The senior from Portland has already got one tackle behind the line. And watch, Sue just stays after it, splits it. Two guys trying to block him, guard and center. Good hands. Talk about hands and quick feet. You saw him swatting, swimming, ripping inside. He's very, very tenacious with his hands. And that time he got the separation. He's so quick with his lateral moves. He's, he's complete football player. He's had at least one tackle behind the line in 17 of the last 18 games. Screen. And do they get the blocking? Yes. Taken in by Lenz, a true freshman. And the quick one across the 30 to the 33, and Sue from behind gets to him. Well, watch this never say die attitude of Sue. This will make a, a good player great. Rush the passer, say, no, nope. oh, I'm going to retrace my steps and get involved. I'm telling you, he's got a linebacker's physical athletic ability in a 300 pound body. He is special. 6'4, 300 pounds. Iowa State. 
third down, one of four, and it's deflected and punched away from Jake Williams. Alfonso Denard. If he leads him too well, it's intercepted. Denard had the position. Denard read the route. The route recognition, he broke on it. He broke on it and turned himself into the primary receiver. I mean, he took away the inside position from Marquise Hamilton. And he almost, they almost had to reverse roles. Paul waits for the punt. Yeah, that's Niles Paul waiting for the punt from Mike Brantner. Nebraska should be up by a lot more than 7-3. to three. Well, They have had the field position, and right now, Iowa State is completely handcuffed, and it's a fake, wow. and Brandner's got a lot of room to run across the 40, 45, 50, out of bounds, he goes. Smart play, first down. A, what a gamble and a risk by Paul Rhodes and Iowa State, but the call it, obviously, at the appropriate time. You like the, they saw this in, in film study, and they said, okay, they are, they are basically, everybody's setting up a wall too pre prematurely. They're leaving the line of scrimmage prematurely. So let's just run the fake if we have the look that we think we're going to get. And if they're going to give up the, the left side to our punter, he's an athlete. We believe in him. And I'll tell you what, Brand, Brantner did a good job of getting everything he could before he got out of bounds. That's a, that's a gutsy call. Iowa State is going to fire every bullet out of the chamber. They're without their starting quarterback and running back. And they're going to try to do everything they possibly can to win this game. They're plus two in turnovers. That was a huge special team play. So, 25-yard run by Brandner down to the 47 of Nebraska. Tiller on the play fake. He got blocking. And going for the bundle. He's got Williams. Touchdown, Iowa State. Jake Williams. They strike big after the gamble. Absolutely. They went right for the jugular. And they did a great job. And it was a, a scenario where the receiver found the football and the defender didn't. I think it was Eric Haig back there that could not find the football. The receiver does a good job of making an adjustment on the throw by Tiller. And defensive back could not find it. What an effort. And, and the, the philosophy, run the fake and then go downtown. They're saying, we're here to play. We don't care if we don't have our starting quarterback or our starting running back. We're here to play. The play is going to be. The previous play is under further review. <laughs> well, and that doesn't help Grant Mahoney. Extra points haven't been easy for the place kicker of Iowa State, and they're freezing them a little bit now. But the throw by Jerome Tiller, longest of his young career. Little play action fake. Zone read, don't run it, throw it. They've been running it off the zone read. Find the football. One does, one doesn't. Receiver adjusts to the ball, Jake Williams, and it was the valuable player we're talking about, Eric Haig, at 205 pounds, 6'2", could not find the football. And they have a lot of confidence in him covering those seam routes. And they're looking to see if he had possession and control of the football when he went to the ground. <laughs> it's a classic waste of time. Did he have possession? Did he have control? Did the ground help him secure it? Did he have full possession as he went to the turf? Is there enough evidence to overturn it? I'd be surprised. It's It'll be a stand. touchdown. It'll stand. We're over the season, but that'll be a touchdown. Jake Williams, you got to give him a lot of credit. <laughs> good, good adjustment to the football and to finalize that play. Well, I said Williams and Hamilton had to pick it up. They're the top two pass catchers uh, for Austin Arno this year. And with an inexperienced quarterback like Jerome Tiller, who only had 26 passes basically in mop-up duty coming into this game, then your receivers have to run precise, clean routes for the kid. Well, and, and, I, and I like the gutsy calls. Paul Rhodes showing some guts. Run the fake punt. After further review, the ruling on the field is confirmed. Touchdown. Okay, Paul Rhodes. Paul Rhodes runs the fake punt. And then Tom Herman says, Coach, I'm going to go for the throat right now. And, he, and off the zone read that's been effective for Tiller running it, he has a complimentary play action fake off the zone read and then throw it over the head. And the biggest fear Carl Pelini had was falling for the, for the fakes on the play action. That's been the Achilles heel. Grant Mahoney is not automatic. Whoa. It's blocked. It could be returned. Instead, it goes out of bounds. I said Grant Mahoney has missed too many extra points. Now you go to review it with the place kicker. All of a sudden, he's got too much time to think. Well, Sue got his hand on it, and Sue ate it up. Sue in the middle. Watch the surge in the middle. And Sue gets the mucker up. Left hand blocks it. Sue. A 9-7 lead for the Cyclones. Now, Grant Mahoney didn't get the chip shot. There was great penetration by Sue. There's no question, but a lot of guys, as you said before we broke away, Dave Lapp, 
They use a wedge on it. Shot like that. It's not like a long field goal. And our direct TV game summary. Mahoney hit a 52-yard field goal for the first points of the day. Nebraska, though, mistakes and wasted opportunities. They should be on top right now. And it's amazing because he got great elevation on the 52-yard field goal. That's when you have to hit the three iron and drive it. And he got it airborne, and he got it way up quickly. On the extra point, when you can use the wedge, he kicked the middle of the football a little bit low trajectory. It was the perfect storm. Low trajectory and tremendous penetration by Sue. And they got caught in that perfect storm, and it got blocked. Mahoney will kick it away. Back deep. Niles Paul, Tim Marlowe. Not Phillips, but Tim Marlowe. And Paul will take up the run short, but across the 15 to the 20, 25, and a good return out as he's tossed down at about the 33. O'Connell, the D-back, on the coverage. Let's take a look at this touchdown on the, on the play action pass. And Carl Pliny's fear was the play action pass, not to get sucked up and fooled by it. Pretty good coverage. Jake Williams gets it, and Jerome Tillis says, oh, baby, we go for the big play and execute it, and my wide receiver did it for me. He goes and hugs the center. That's a good move. The center is your, your, your most important guy up front making all the calls. He made the good protection call, and touchdown. Pelu is the single. They're not that deep at Ivac, at least experience-wise. And Hello denied early as Jesse Smith on the top of the situation once again. Big 12 leading tackler. Well, for our free credit report.com sideline report, our man in Lincoln, Jim Knox. All right, thank you, Joe. As you look on the sidelines, Tiller's still talking to Jake Williams on that play. They just got through talking, and Tiller was talking to him about, hey, you know, we can go after that corner again. We can take him deep. What worked on that play was, was Jake actually gave him a quick fake inside off the line of scrimmage, and then he went deep on the play. And they think they can go after that play again. We'll see what happens. Lee. Looking to his tie it in and knocked away. Jesse Smith is everywhere today. McNeil, the intended target, a very good tie it in. Well, that's the second pass play that, that, he, that Smith's been involved in. He deflected the ball in the red zone that was intercepted. When he deflected that, got his hands on that football at David Sims Corral, that was huge, and he has another pass breakup right here. And the takeaways by Iowa State. One short field, end up 52-yard field goal. Second one, Nebraska in the red zone, the scoring zone. Again, they come up with nothing because of the interception in the red zone. It'll be third and nine for Nebraska. This is key. Momentum has certainly shifted. Crowd has quieted down. 85, almost 86,000 strong. Lee on the comeback, and it's dropped. Paul had it. Dropped it, and he had first down yardage. Banks was in the area bothering him, but catchable football. That's what, you know, Nebraska struggles offensively. Sometimes it's a quarterback. Sometimes it's a receiver. Sometimes the protection isn't good enough. But this football, you have to catch. Let it get into his body. Get your hands out in front and snag the football. Get into the body. Bad things can happen. The ball eats you up a little bit. Go out and get the ball. Alex Henry, who handles both place kicking and punting for the Huskers, and a very good one to that. Honorable mention all Big 12 last year. Had pressure, got it away. It's Josh Lenz for the Cyclones, and he's going to take the one hopper. Good about four or five yards, pushed out of bounds, close to the 22. Anthony Blue on the coverage. So Iowa State with their second lead of the day. They've stunned them here in Lincoln on top by two. Well, what a beautiful time of the year to come back to the upper Midwest. Good to be in Lincoln, Nebraska, one of our favorite places to watch college football. Tiller on first and ten with Schwartz in the backfield. The option read, he'll keep it. And only maybe about three or four as he didn't put in the play and didn't put a knee down. So bring up second and about six. Well, first down marker brought to you by Overstock.com. Save up to 70% off brand names every day at Overstock.com. Overstock.com at home with the O. And, and Dave, people say you got to see a baseball game at Fenway Park. I agree. Wrigley Field, concur completely. Right. But if you're into college football, you have to see a game at Memorial Stadium. One of the most historic, tradition-rich venues ever. Yeah, people are great here. And it's behind Williams who caught the touchdown. And I talked about it earlier, the sportsmanship, just the overall mentality of the people here. You're welcome here. You're not abused here. It's it, my first game here. I was the voice in radio, UCLA 1983. And it was such a, an impression. It was such a great experience, and it always is. The thing I remember is Ricky Williams beat Nebraska with a great rushing effort, and they gave him a standing ovation in that end zone that he departed the field. And I thought, what other home crowd 
would give a visiting player like that an ovation. A crowd that understands him right. and basically loves football. That's yeah. who. Now it's a good crowd. Well mannered crowd. Timeout to him at Iowa State on a third and about four. Timeout. Iowa State. Iowa State's already had Here's too many close second. ones in Big 12 play. As they take a timeout here, they've got one remaining. Remember the October 3rd game, Arrowhead Stadium in Kansas City? Kansas State, they'd like to forget it, but we'll talk about it when we come back to Lincoln, Nebraska. Welcome back once again to Lincoln, Nebraska. With 5.17 to play in the half. Fox NFL Sunday doubleheader. Good one. Vikings, Steelers, Roethlisberger, Brett Favre. It all starts noon Eastern, 9 Pacific with a pregame show. There's a lot of good matchups tomorrow, so the Fox NFL Sunday pregame. Turn it on at noon Eastern. Joel Myers, Dave Lapp, and Jim Knox back in Lincoln, Nebraska. Cool, crisp autumn afternoon and a good one for football. As Iowa State looking at a third and four of their own 28. Ton of time for Chiller. And now a jump ball knocked away. And a good play by the defensive back on that side. Alfonso Denard. Well, the black shirt defense has played really well in the first quarter. Iowa State only had 19 yards on 10 snaps of offense. One play, 47 yard touchdown pass, Jerome Tiller to Jake Williams after the fake punt. One play is what the black shirts have given up, and that's the reason that they're trailing 9 7. Brandner gets into it. Another beauty. One of the better punters in the nation. Paul calling for the fair catch late. And they stayed out of his way. It was a little contact. The D back who got involved, Kennard Banks, but again, just good hang time, good punt. Well, Nebraska has been a very good fourth quarter team, and overall, they have been a great defensive team in holding the opposition to only just about 12 points a game. That is sixth best in the nation. And that's with uh, giving up 31 last week to Texas Tech. And the defense was only responsible for 24 of those 31 points. Uh, Texas Tech scored a defensive touchdown against Nebraska's offense, but they are stout defensively, but they do have a tendency to give up like Virginia Tech. One play, one big play, possibly. Trey Robinson on the carry, slashing off the right side for about five or six yards. We talked to Bo Pelini about his defensive unit, and those guys get the black shirts back. I think our our defense is, you know, they it's a it's a special tradition around here. It's something that was important to them. And uh, but we're not the finished product by any means. But I really believe our attitude and our work ethic and the things that are happening on that side of the ball are, are leading us in the right direction. Well, over the last two years, are one of the most improved defensive units in the country. Jesse Smith again pushing back Trey Robinson. So it's going to bring up third. At about five after the loss of a yard, we talked about it. Well, the most important step, how many points do you give up? And it all starts with that. Yeah, it does. And uh, they've done a good job in just about every statistical category you can, you can think of. As you see there, they're ranked in the top 25 in just about everything. But I'll tell you what, I want to tip the cap to Iowa State's defense. Not as many athletes as Nebraska has. Not as big, not as fast, not as athletic. But they play tough defense. And they've been playing it again today. Two takeaways have been massive. It'll be third and five, Nebraska. On their third down tries. Just now going deep. Paul's there. Paul's got it over the shoulder. 30. And I believe bumped out of bounds. Lost the football. Loses it again. And it is covered by Iowa State in the end zone. Big play. Touchback. Getting back. James Smith didn't quit on it. Touchback. I thought he was out of bounds, though. Yeah, so was we he, might see the review. Was he out of bounds, and did the ground cause the fumble? Did he lose control of the football because the ground caused it? Those are two things to look at. He was tightrope in the sideline. Did he step out of bounds with that left foot as he's tightrope in the sideline? Side but this is a microcosm of the, of the Cornhusker offense. Great throw by Zach Lee, and he's trying to separate. Okay, does that left foot step out of bounds? Does he stay in bounds? He's tightroping it, and then now he just lost control of the football. The the in the end zone, therefore, by rule, left back. Never, never got full control of it. Never had control now, of it when he hit the foot, ground. Dave, left foot. Yeah, as he's tight rope on the sideline here, he's he's clipped at the feet. Did the left foot go out of bounds? Ooh, that's close. No call out of bounds. They're saying he's in. And I'll tell you, Leonard Johnson, great hustle play, clipping at the feet, making him lose his balance as he tried to maintain his balance, tight rope on the sideline, forgot about the football, lost control of the football, 
I mean, good hustle on a couple of cases. Leonard Johnson pursuing it. Cedric Johnson pursuing it. Johnson and Johnson conver con con uh, converging on that play to make a big. That's a huge effort right there. Clip the heels. Is he inbounds, out of bounds? Official looking right at it says he's still in bounds. Loses control of it. And then Cedric Johnson says, I'm staying after the, this football, and I'm going to go get it. Is there any is there any green between the sole of his foot and the sideline? And I, I don't think they're going to reverse that. I think it. I think it. It's it. It's not indisputable evidence either way. The, the call on the field will stand. And I, I just like the hustle of Iowa State. Never quit on that play. Never got their dauber down. And Johnson and Johnson. How about those two hustling for potentially the third takeaway of the game? And this one in the red zone as well. They they thwarted two scoring efforts by Nebraska with takeaways, one interception on a tip ball by Jesse Smith, and then that fumble, and then their first takeaway gave them the short field that they settled for a 52-yard field goal on. The defense for Iowa State has been a big, big story today, competing with the black shirt defense. Biggest win of the year for Nebraska was the Missouri game, and that's the game they took the ball away from the Tigers, where they won. They were a and plus minus territory. They won the turnover margin. There's the turnovers. There's Banks picking that one up. And now Sims on the interception there. And then the final one we just saw was James Smith picking up this loss by Niles Paul. And, and the question is. After further review, the ruling on the field stands as called. Iowa State keeps <laughs> He stepped out of bounds, but it wasn't enough visible evidence to overturn the play as we all saw. And I thought that Niles Paul controlled the football when he picked it up off the ground visually. I thought when it hit the ground, he caught it, and then and then as he stretched out the ball, the, the football, the ground caused the second fumble of the football, but that wasn't the case either. And the fans are upset about the call, but I'll tell you, replay, there was not enough evidence to overturn it. Taylor on the gun. And Sue on the back. Jeremiah Schwartz right away after a gain of about two before Sue got there. Well, Nebraska's killing themselves right now. They're doing a number on themselves. 245 yards on 35 snaps compared to 22 for 120 on Iowa State offensively. Well, it's all self inflicted wounds, Joel. It's uh, turnovers, it's penalties, it's drop passes. It's the same problem the offense has had. Everybody says it's Zach Lee baloney. It's everybody. It's not just Zach Lee. Everybody has to tighten up their, their game. Schwartz again looking for a little crease, but dropped immediately. That time, Pierre Allen, uh, the defensive end. And, and to go back to what you're talking about, Zach Lee is 14 of 19 for 182 yards. The one he had picked off was deflected. So that was tipped by Jesse Smith on the takeaway. And that ball was underthrown a little bit. That's why Jesse Smith could get up and tip it because Jesse Smith is not the biggest linebacker in the world at six feet. One of six on third down tries for Iowa State so far this afternoon. The 221 to play. Good pocket protection. Tiller can run for it, but. He oh, lost that. it, and it's picked up. Nebraska gets it Crick. back. Crick. Jared yep. Crick got it. Turner forced it. So a takeaway finally for Nebraska is they're going to have it. Turner's did looking. they give it back? Did they lose it at the end? And Turner's did Crick have it stripped away? Yep. Yep, the offensive lineman actually came away. Osemele. <laughs> it looked like it was all Cricks. Yeah, Crick dove for the football. And when you dive for it, sometimes the ball slides around on you. And, and the ball is out in, in a good effort right there by Barry Turner stripping it and Crick over, over slides it. That's exactly what Jesse Smith did for Iowa State. And as he overslid it, then you have a, a, a nice hustle once again. Osimile. And, and, and that's the one thing, Joel, that you have to admire about Iowa State. Nobody's quitting on the play. Everybody's hustling to the last second. Because, you know, you can assume, oh, man, this ball, this fumble, it, Barry Turner forces it out in front of everybody's view. Crick's got it. No. Look at the simulate. Just stay right after it and say, I'm going to fight for that football. I mean, they are doing the little things. Iowa State's doing the little things. And, and the Cornhuskers keep coming up with the self-inflicted wounds.
It's amazing. Guy feels like he's playing in Boulder right now. A senior from Houston over on the sideline saves it and makes it possibly a long field for Nebraska. And Nebraska still has. Well, they've got one timeout left, just like Iowa State, with exactly two minutes to play. Niles Paul waits for the punt. Redner has been exceptional. He's got a 50 yard average on three punts so far today. Nebraska better be sound because they ran a fake. You know, big splits, they got to be sound. Another beauty. Back penalty. Niles Paul back at about the 14. And special teams play outstanding again. It was A.J. Klein, and he is going to show up in film in the first half on a number of plays for Paul Rhodes' squad. Let's head downstairs. Noxy. Okay, Joel, coming up on the Geico Halftime Show, we will join John Raddick and Joel Clack in the studio. They'll go over top 25 scores and highlights on the Geico Halftime Show. And I tell you what, Dave, we'll have a nice piece of corn here waiting for you, big guy. Yeah, get a piece of corn. Get a little butter, a little salt, Noxy. You know, Noxy never looked better, actually. The Sioux Fan Club living well here. Interference trying to get it to hold, and it was Banks, the senior from Boynton Beach, Florida, on the flag. Pass interference, number seven, defense. The ball will be played on the foul, automatic first down. If Crick comes up with the ball, it's at the 29 of Iowa State. Instead, it went back, don't forget, to the Nebraska 16 after the punt. Yeah, you, you just can't go through a receiver like that to make a plan of football. Kennard Banks tried to avoid it, couldn't. Drop. Holt trying to stop on a dime. He also did have his right arm wrapped as he tried to go around him. You can see it hooked him right in front of the official on the sideline. So it's going to be a second and ten stopping the clock with a minute 40 to play. Iowa State should be up by three. Sue had something to say about that though and a blocks extra point. So and, and there's you know there's a, a, a dynamic going on in the offensive line as well. Caputo's been in at center ever since the first series. Hickman went out after the first series. Caputo the backup center in there. A little different action up front. And another oh, pass that. interference yeah. call. That's coming easy. He's trying to get it to Gilliland. <laughs> Michael man, O'Connell. Oh man. He just grabbed him. Yep. Michael O'Connell said. Got there a little early. Come back here. You're not going to separate from me. I'm going to pull you with my left arm. Pass interference. Defense. The ball will be placed at the spot of the foul. Automatic first down. Junior from Iowa City. Puts it at the 36. The spot of the foul. Slot receiver is going to run a little, little pattern, little pivot route. And watch O'Connell grab him. Now you can't separate. You're going to come back to me with that left arm. Put the big hook on him. And you can see the size of the guy. It's a safety, almost like a linebacker. As it's put on the ground by Lee. And now in scramble mode, he'll run it out of bounds. Uh, positive. And it looked like it could have been a negative because he gets four yards and stops the clock. Saving their final time out. 90 seconds left in the half. Holt does a good job at the wide receiver position, turning into a blocker as soon as he realized that Zach Lee was going to tuck it and run. So it's going to be second and six. At the 40. This crowd has been taken out of the game by the mistakes of the Huskers. It's a very quiet 85 86,000. Lyle almost jumped on the play. Ton of time. And Lee oh. underneath. And his receiver Gilliland wanted to make a move before he had the football. Yeah, and the ball was thrown to the back side of Gilliland. Felt like he couldn't lead him because there was a defender in the vicinity. So he put it on the back shoulder instead of the front shoulder. You see him crossing right underneath by the umpire. And he puts it behind him. I mean, if, you know, if he hits him right between the ones, instead of making him work so hard to make the play. Now, is that catchable? Yes. But the funk that this offense is in, quarterback has to throw it better. Receivers have to catch it. Linemen have to block, just like we've been talking about. There's a breakdown at every position group, every single play almost. That was Cody Green, true freshman, backup quarterback on the sideline. Six straight misses now for Zach Lee on a third down. Yep, a seventh straight miss. As he looked over to the far side for Wes Kamen. His first look for the senior who has one catch so far this senior season. And a punting situation with a minute 21 to play. 
Zach Lee starting to feel a little bit of pressure. And, and, and really, it's not all his fault, but the quarterback, you know, the backup quarterback's the most popular person in any city. Until he goes in there and experiences some of the problems Zach Lee is in terms of teammates not making plays as well. What a strange finish this has been to the first half for the Nebraska Cornhuskers after dominating over the first 25 minutes. Henry gets into a Josh Lenz will bring it back from the 17. And Lenz tracked down and spun down very quickly. And downfield for Nebraska, it was Gomes with the defensive back. Well, the uh, walk-on, former walk-on linebacker, he's got a starting position. Now he's captain, Jesse Smith. Look at him deflect that ball in the red zone. And he, at, at the tip, is kept alive. David Sims' interception returns then for positive yards. And now he's involved making hits at the line of scrimmage, dropping into coverage again. He's an excellent run defender, as well as taking great drops and, and making plays in the passing game. He has been a two-way linebacker, not just a first down run stuffer. He's been a big factor in the passing game as well. So we talked a lot about the black shirts, the Nebraska defense. Well, they one time out on the board for Nebraska, so Iowa State with a redshirt freshman quarterback making his first career start. You can understand why they're taking a knee, and they like to go to the locker room right now with any kind of advantage. Oh, heck yeah. I mean, you don't want to, in the red zone against the Nebraska black shirt defense, you don't want to put your team in jeopardy potentially. Go in with a lead, say, you know what, our defense has been outstanding. You know, we talked about one of the keys to be at least plus two in the turnover department. They're plus three. One of them gave them a short field where they scored a field goal off it. The other two prevented Nebraska points. The turnovers were unbelievably timely. And then they've, got a, they've done a decent job in their kicking game, although they did have one extra point block because of slightly low kick and big penetration by Sue. That'll do it for the half. Final snap. Talk about a subdued 85, almost 86,000. That's the case here in Lincoln, Nebraska. So the Huskers lost at home last week to Texas Tech, 31 to 10. And now an Iowa State team that hasn't won in this stadium since 1977 goes to the locker room at halftime up by two. Nine to seven as we check in downstairs with Jim Knox. Knoxie. Thank you, Joe. Coach, I tell you what, you said before the game you had to win this one as, as a team because two of your top players are out, and you're doing just that courtesy of three huge turnovers. Huge turnovers yeah, uh, in one half. I mean, big times, too. Those, those weren't just uh, turnovers that, that, that helped out. They were monumental turnovers. Defense also do an outstanding job, especially Jesse Smith, 10 tackles in the first half. Well, he's, he's all over the field as he's been consistently for us all season long. Okay, appreciate it, Coach. Best of luck in the second half. Halftime in Lincoln with the score, Iowa State 9, Nebraska 7. We come back, John Raddick and Joel Clack with the Geico Halftime Show right after this quick timeout. 12 Country, presented by Phillips HD, and Iowa State trying to pull off a massive upset. It's halftime, but they're still up by two. Well, it's time now for our Land Rover presents the current BCS standings. No change up top Florida, but there is a change. Texas had been number two, now it's Alabama. Texas is number three. And we remind you, Land Rover wants to send you to the college football bowl game of your choice. So go to LandRoverUSA.com to register for the Road to the Bowl sweepstakes today. And welcome back once again to Lincoln, Nebraska. Joel Myers along with Dave Lapman a shocker so far because of all the mistakes made by the Nebraska Cornhuskers putting the ball on the ground three giveaways so far and also the gadget plays helped Iowa State. Uh, there's no question I mean Nebraska's doubled them in yards but yards don't beat your points do and Nebraska's had a lot of self inflicted wounds but you have to really like what Iowa State has done. They've taken advantage of opportunities and they run the fake punt and this is a great call. Mike Brantner goes 25 yards over the left side. And, and moves the chains, keeps control of the football. The very next play, a little zone read, play action fake. 47 yards, Jerome Tiller to Jake Williams. So they go right for the jugular. That's the only big play that Iowa State has had. And Jerome Tiller loved the big play. And I'll tell you, boy, we like Stevenson. Look at Nebraska dominating in every category except three turnovers, Iowa State, 100% ball security. Uh, it's, it's amazing. They're one for seven on third down, but the three takeaways, and it was the timeliness of the takeaways. They scored three points off the first takeaway, and they negated Nebraska scoring opportunities with two takes in the red zone, Joel. It's been amazing how they've reacted defensively. Iowa State, Dave, is going to start with the football. Uh, there's Tiller, the redshirt freshman from Lee High School in San Diego. 
So Kunanik will kick it away. Leonard Johnson, David Sims back deep for the Cyclones, and it's picked up. The wind is picked up. You can tell it just blew it off the tee, and our guy go eyes on stats. Well, top tackler in the Big 12 coming in, the only one of the Big 12 to average double figures in stops per game already there today. Man, man. He's had his eyes in the right gap, and he's been reading the keys, boy. His eyes have been eyes on for Geico. So Iowa State will get the football. And now, how much is it swirling down there? Well, Kunalik's going to need some help from a teammate to hold the football. So the wind could be a factor, especially for the place kickers. And it's going to be Sims bringing it back. Got a good lane over to the right side, back to the middle, and set up perfectly. Sims with a stiff arm on Kunalik. There's a flag way back, though. Forget it. Mm. So instead of midfield strike, flag is back at the 14. Half the distance to the goal and half the distance to the end zone. Matthew During May the on the stop. Block in the back, number 82, return team. Half the distance to the goal. Man, first down. Marquise Hamilton, the wide receiver. That yeah. hurts. A starter playing on the in the special teams, and he has an unfortunate lazy hands. Let's take a look at him right here. Oh, right here, right here. Let's take a look and see what he does. See, the push is in the back. Yeah, well, boy, that's dicey. You know, and the thing is, Paul Rose, the head coach, said, oh, almost a face mask there as well, but the stiff arm prevents the face mask from happening. He said special teams have, have exceeded his expectations in the preseason. These kids get 12 to 20 snaps, and they give it everything they have in there. They do everything the coaches ask of them. That's an unfortunate penalty. That's a self-destruction. Stand averaging only three per carry now back at the seven and Schwartz instead cheddar on the play fake. Well, that's way above their average of three per pop. They get it for close to eight out to the 15. Nice deception as we look at the first half series for the Cyclones of Iowa State. And a couple of times they were deep in their own territory, and especially with the second when they started back in their own two yard line. Well, that was the first takeaway for the field goal. And then this was after the fake punt. Other than that, it's been tough sledding. For the, uh, for the Iowa State Cyclones against this black shirt defense. Jeremiah Schwartz, nope, Jenner again calling his own number. And right at, but maybe a few inches shy of the first down marker at the 17. Field position definitely favored Nebraska. You look at what Iowa State had in their first half leaders. We look at those numbers, and there aren't many numbers out there. Williams with a big wrap. Dave, Iowa State, they had series starting at their own two, their own 17, 22, 20, 18. 21. They really didn't have a lot of comfort zone back there for a redshirt freshman making his first career start. Well, offensively, there weren't many numbers, but Jesse Smith leading that defense, boy, a lot of numbers there. Need a couple of inches, and Schwartz gets it. It was third and less than a yard. He's across the 17, near the 18. Even if he had to go and spin around to go backwards to get it. Jeremiah Schwartz, another redshirt freshman, first team all state in a big division last year in Orlando, Florida. Carl, Gets Pelini, Carl Pelini, the defensive coordinator, knows that that's the downhill guy. 5'11", over 230 pounds. You can't get them third and short. What? Big plus for Iowa State on the takeaways. Also a big plus in that 52-yard field goal, but then the minus on the missed extra point. See how big that looms. Jenner with a pop. And is complete. As he goes to Catlett, the senior tight end from Fort Collins, Colorado. <laughs> dart in front of Sean Fisher on the stop. In of about four. It's almost like a running play. Well, you know that four-yard game, Tom Herman, the offensive coordinator for Iowa State, he said you have to celebrate the four-yard games against the black shirts of Bo Pelini. You know, when you're on schedule and you pick up four yards, they don't give up a whole lot of big plays. And Iowa State has been struggling, you know, on a snap-by-snap -snap basis, but they get the big 47-yard touchdown pass. That was a big celebration. Wide side, Jenner won't get away. Jared Crick on his back. Now let's head downstairs. Noxie. All right, thank you, Joe. Talk to Bo Pelini at halftime. He said about those turnovers, we just got to fix it. He goes, no questions about it. We got to fix it. In the second half, he said, look for us to correct those problems. He says it's frustrating. You dominate the first half, and those turnovers just cost them big time. Right now, the offensive line waiting to get on the field for Nebraska. That's our free credit report.com sideline report. Thanks, Jim. And then that offensive line waiting to get on the field without their leader, Jacob Hickman, at the center position. 
They've had Caputo in there ever since the first series of the game. Different, different deal. Now Tiller in trouble. Sue in pursuit. And out of the pocket. Intelligent play again. He knows what he's doing. Otherwise, he's back there inside the five, and they got a punt from their own end zone. Instead, it goes back to the original line, the 18. I'll tell you, Tiller can run. But the amazing thing to me is Sue and Crick, both of them pursuing the play. Look at these two defensive tackles, 93 and 94. Look at these big guys run. I mean, Crick outran Sue. I, that is a tandem of defensive tackles that aren't just large bodies. They can flat out run. And the best thing for Nebraska, because Sue is a senior, Crick is only a sophomore from Kozak. Paul waits for the punt. And a short one as it goes out of bounds by the standards of Mike Brantner today. Before that, he had four for an average of 52 yards. Well, as we look at Nebraska possessions here shortly, you know, here's the story. That gave them a field goal, Iowa State. They score and take a lead. Okay, then they say, hey, I'm gonna, enter, I'm gonna give it up in the red zone. Give it up in the red zone again. They left so many points in the field. They doubled up Iowa State's yards. But yards don't beat you, points do. They have not had an efficient points per possession because of the turnovers. Lee in trouble, the dump off. That's his tied end. And good pursuit after the grab by McNeil. That wasn't his first option, but because of the heat, and James Smith got him in the secondary, he had to go to that option. Yeah, Fred Guerin was all over quarterback Zach Lee. Zach, and, and Zach did a good job before Guerin could corral him. He checked it down to his big old tight end, Mike McNeil, and said, you know what? You're the guy that has to do something in space. I, I've got Garen on my heels here. Yeah, I'll take what I can get out of this play. Second and five. Great field position once again for the Cornhuskers. Holt sets out of the slot. He looks a little stop, and it's off the fingertips on the hot one, going high to Brandon Kinney, who came in with only one catch, but had two very early in this contest. Banks on the coverage, and first-half leaders for the Huskers. Will Lee got up to a great start, 14 of 16. Then he missed his last seven of the half. Right, and the interception was off a deflection, and nice little average for a rush by Robinson. Now it's Paul, great numbers, but, you know, he can't control the football as he's tight rope on the sideline and fumbles the football for a touchback that negates scoring opportunities. In the, in the red zone. So even though the numbers are good, you saw the interception, you saw the fumble. I mean, one step forward, two steps back. Are right, they going to waste this field position? No. That time, Kenny hangs on. The sophomore from Kansas City. It'll be a first down to the 34. So three catches already today and only one on the year coming in. Well, he got inside of Banks, and he got inside of Banks confidently. Uh, showed himself as an available park target and snagged the football. I mean, he didn't let it get into his chest and eat him up. And uh, that Kenny presents himself as a as a pretty big target as well. They've got some size at the wide receiver position the Cornhuskers do. Kenny's 6'3", 215. So first down for Nebraska. Got a timeout has been called by the Huskers. Boy, is that going to hurt him? Close game. Half. You don't want to burn timeouts Number early. Time we'll come right back to Lincoln. Gray day, and that's kind of the mood of the ballpark at this juncture. He's, you know what? He was a Ram. He was a great player. He was unbelievable for the Seahawks, don't forget. He was. That sensational season they had when he came over. Great player. Great yeah. player. He, for so a lot he of years. deserves to be in the College Football Hall of Fame. So, congratulations to Grant Wister with a honored and celebrated between the first and second quarter here. Bailey Johnson, the guy who was leaning a little bit early. Exactly on first and ten. Out of the timeout. With a stop drop. Van Paul's got it. Hangs on. He's got it down to the 19. Another first down in front of James Smith. Well, Nebraska, one of the keys was run the football and stop the other team from running it. They ran it uh, just three yards more than Iowa State, so not quite what they were looking for. And in the red zone, you know, they had the touchdown, but... They had two turnovers in the red zone as well, where they came up with zero points. You know, that's where the turnovers occurred. So when they were getting in that scoring zone, they self-destructed. A couple of negatives, that's why they're down in the game, even though they generated yards. Hello, finally carrying the football. They've used him as a decoy, and he gets it for about four. So here is the second leading rusher in the league and he has hardly touched the ball today the first time he touched it he put it on the ground and it turned into three points so 
103 yards a game, and he's got nine on four carries. Amazing. You have to wonder if that shoulder, he's got a stinger in his shoulder. Is that preventing him from the ball security? I mean, I thought the ball came out of there rather easily. I mean, Hellu is stronger ball security than that. Tough I, wonder kid. He, I wonder if he's having some issues. It's Hellu making a mess inside the five. First and goal. Looked pretty good on that one. He lost it. Yeah, he lost it, but yeah. it was down. It was a bounce. Right, but I'm saying, even when he goes to the ground, the ball's coming up. I'm wondering if he is having some physical problems with that uh, shoulder stinger. And he, he showed the explosiveness on that snap. I mean, he planted that foot in the old cutback lane. It, it, look, I mean, it, all, it's not major contact, Ooh. and the ball's coming out of there. I, yeah, you know, that, I, I, they I'm may review it, and they will. They're going to take another look. Yeah, it was coming out early yeah. before he hit it. And it was just contact from the side. And I'm wondering Ruling if he's... on the field is under further review. Much I, further review. I'm wondering if, he's, <laughs> if he doesn't have feeling, you know, or, or when he gets hit, if he loses feeling. Shoulder stingers can be a real problem. I thought it was a bounce, and when I say bounce, when he hit the, the turf, Underneath him, but, it came out. But when he got hit on right, the side, when he right. got hit in the shoulder, right there, did he start losing possession of the football? And, and, yep. and I mean, if the ball's turning, spinning right here, the hit he takes, right there, okay, oh, the ball's starting to move yep. a little bit. And then does he have total possession before he hits the ground? That's going to be the decision. It's out. Does and he Mike O'Neill gets it for a. I think it's going the other way. I don't know. I mean, he he keeps he has his arm under it. He doesn't have total possession. He doesn't but the, have control. The ball's moving on him right there. That shot that he takes, the ball starts to move on him. That's it's a fumble. Out. That's a fumble. Mike O'Neill alertly picked it up. The junior from Iowa City, and I got a feeling it is going to be even grayer and a blue blue day and that here would, in Lincoln. That would be the fourth turnover, fourth giveaway potentially, and the third one. That had or all four of them having huge consequences, but this is the third one in the red zone potentially. One led to a field goal score for Iowa State short field. The other three have been have happened in the scoring zone. If in fact this one is ruled a fumble, but Hello's not right. I mean that wasn't major contact, and I'm not sure if he has enough strength and feeling in that right arm. Dave, it's out. It's out on its way down. It's turning. When he takes that shot, the ball's turning. It's it's starting to move out of his arm, and 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 he starts to try to recover it. He knows he's got to try to possess it as he hits the turf, and he doesn't possess it. This could be Iowa State football, and I think he's anxiously awaiting it because I think he knows in his heart that he never yeah. had control of that. There's a sick feeling over on that sideline right now. Yeah, he's hoping, hoping, you know, and the call in the field obviously is is the big factor as well. Alexander Robinson, our days in. Top rushers of the Big 12. Robinson not playing today. He didn't even travel. He's not even here. Hello at 103.3. We documented before that run. And it, to set it up first and goal, he had four carries for nine yards. So he's definitely not himself. And he could be two lost fumbles on his fifth carry. He could, he could have two fumbles on five carries, and he didn't lose any fumbles all year long until today. There's a guy on the sideline. We had a shot of Austin Arnout. He was he is responsible for 16 touchdowns. That's what's missing for Iowa State. After further review, the ball came out prior to the runner being down. The ball was immediately recovered by Iowa State in the end zone. Touchback. By rule, they take possession of off that spot. Touchback, first down, Iowa wow. State, 20 yard line. Touchback for Iowa State, fourth giveaway for Nebraska, and they continue, absolutely continue to kill themselves. Disbelief on them. The fans face who's here. It is amazing. I mean, now it becomes a mental issue. As you start to hit the red zone, you think, what's going to happen next? Three turnovers in the red zone. And right now, Nebraska is minus four. Minus four. And it's early in the second half. And they're, they get a two-point lead. And Paul Rhodes knows. He said, you know, we've got to be at least plus two. Well, heck. They're plus four, and it's you know there are turnovers, and then there are turnovers. These giveaways are huge because they're on the brink of points, and they're leaving points in the field. Nebraska from the 21st down. Schwartz won't get out of the backfield. Stand him up at the 20. There is one person watching this game right now. I have to give mention to, and it's killing him. It is just burning inside him. He left here as the all-time leading scorer in Nebraska basketball history. His name is Stu Lance. He tolerates me on a regular basis, Dave Lapp. He's my partner on the Laker telecast, and right now, his Nebraska Cornhuskers are beating themselves. So, Stu, feeling your pain. Man, it is, it is absolutely self-inflicted wounds for the Cornhuskers. <laughs> 
Second and ten from the 20. Short side, option, Jetter takes a shot. Coming down was Dillard, senior from Tulsa. He can run. And now it's going to be third long. They're just trying not to beat themselves. That's what Iowa State is doing. They're, they're figuring in Nebraska will continue to make mistakes. We'll take them. First down marker brought to you by Overstock.com. Shop with a company that supports college football. Overstock.com. At home with the O. You know what I, what I liked about Iowa State, though, Joe, when they had their opportunity, they're playing to win, not playing not to lose. They went with the fake punt, and then they came right back the next snap with the play-action pass for a touchdown. Now, out of the gun. Tiller on the move. And Lenz was popped as the ball came in. So did the D-back, Matt O'Hanlon. Timed pretty well, wasn't it? Oh, yeah. There was serious contact there. <laughs> if he would have held on to that football, it would have been miraculous. Josh Lenz, Nebraska, the black shirts are running. Close on the ball. Good effort. Tough throw into double coverage right there. Bracket coverage didn't happen. The black shirts are thinking, give us a little bit of help. I mean, my goodness, four turnovers. This is the best weapon they've had so far, but it's off the side of his foot, into the wing. Brantner, out of bounds, shortest of the day. He was such a factor in the first half in field position because, let's face it, when your team can't move the football, your punter and your specials better be good. And Brantner was incredible in the first half. That, though is going to hurt Iowa State in a big way. Short field now. Nebraska's going to have it at the Cyclones, the 41-yard line when we come back. So the Cyclones hanging on just barely, though. 8.07 left in the third. Cyclones by two. They still don't understand why, but Iowa State is leading 9-7. to seven. Now can Nebraska... Pull something off. Jack Tri Stadium, 2004. Brett Meyer passing. Career high 345. Todd Blythe on this one went for 51 yards. Meyer tossed a career high three TDs. Ben Barkham caught that one. Score tied at 27. Meyer hitting John Davis. How about a 77 yarder? The game winning score. Iowa State in 2004 at home over Nebraska, 34 27. But in Lincoln, a different story. Trey Robinson wrapped up. Man, is Jesse Smith <laughs> having some kind of day. He's all over the field, sideline to sideline. Jim Knox like you, sideline to sideline. There we go. All right, on the Nebraska sideline after that fumble, when the Cornhuskers offense came off the field, Barney Cotton, and the offensive line coach gathered everyone around and said, guys, that's it. No more turnovers. We're going to take the next possession. We're going to drive it down the field. We're going to stick it in the end zone. We'll see what happens. Well, as good, I'm glad you brought it up, Jim, as good as the front four is defensively, it may be one of the best in the nation. They have been inconsistent on the offensive line throughout the season. Trey Robinson cutting it back effectively, and he's short of the first down by about a yard and a half. The rook, and I say... A rook in the sense that he didn't even have a carry coming in today. Not one carry. Nine giveaways over the last two games. That's at least nine fumbles. Yeah. So Trey Robinson yeah, getting into the battle today. The true freshman from Euless, Texas. They put it on the ground nine times. Haven't lost them all, but still. That's way too many times putting the ball on the ground. Ball security is paramount. Three tight ends in the football game now. Third and two. Well, they waste his field position. Robinson won't. Weaving his way out of the backfield. That looked like the old deep eye back that we've seen in the past at Nebraska. Taking his time. Well, I think you need to get back to some of the power running game that Nebraska can do. You have a fullback leading right here. Fullback, watch. Goes up inside. A great relationship. Great, great shoulder to shoulder with Caputo, the center, who pulled that and got out in space. And I want to tip my cap to him. I mean, the offensive line's been doing a decent job. Caputo in there for Hickman, who has a bad ankle. Caputo's hanging in there very well inside. Shift the tight end through Young's with strong side, right side. Robinson goes that side. And he meets James Smith in the secondary after the gain of about seven. A pretty good collision, but that is just old-fashioned Nebraska football. Again, it's power of football. And, you know, you angle block and you pull big people. And around the horn comes the guard. And the fullback's out there and the tight end's out there. Look at the guard and fullback, shoulder to shoulder. That's a nice relationship. A little convoy. Now, you, you know, you put your shoulder pads, lower the pad level, and get what you can. That's power football. That's what I remember Nebraska being about. That's yeah, pulling Keith Williams, a junior from St. Louis, who's McClure North High School, the left guard, with Tyler, Tyler Legate, the fullback. And now, running with good vision. 
Trey Robinson gaining confidence and gaining a first and goal. Lost the football, end of the play. Oh, Iowa wow. State says they took it away, wow. and they did. At the bottom, James Smith has it. Do you believe it? Wow. Two huge recoveries for James Smith. He teamed up in the first half with Leonard Johnson. Leonard Johnson kind of tripped up the receiver going in to score. Receiver drops the football. James Smith falls on it in the end zone. Now he, now he gets another one out of it. Here comes the red zone's become the twilight zone. You know, fighting for extra yards, fighting for extra yards, pulls the ball out. Just the rips previous the ball play under. is under further review. Yeah, the, I don't know if they can take it away because if they hear a whistle, because it didn't sound like the play was stopped, and it looked like he wrestled it out before he got down. Well, it's Frere that went in there, and Nate Frere's ripping it out of there. The big defensive lineman's ripping it out of his grasp. And, and watch 62 come in here and say, you know what, you're, you're driving, driving, I'm going to pull it out of there. He pulls the football out of there, and it goes right to James Smith. I'm not sure they can overturn that. The red zone has become the twilight zone. Five turnovers, four of them in scoring territory. Barney Cotton can't believe it. Bo Pelini can't believe it. I've never seen a black cloud like this hang over an offense for such an extended period of time. They're fine between the 20s. They cross that 20-yard line, and Rod Serling starts. Da -na 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 -da -na -na -na. Something crazy is going to happen. It's twilight zone. Stunned silence as they wait for the review to come down. But over the first six games this year, Nebraska had seven turnovers. Wow. Today, they've got five. And, and, and it's a two-point game. They're minus five. And it's a two-point football game. Yeah. Something about Iowa State, as you see what happened last year in Ames. <laughs> man, man. Incredible. Incre I don't see how they can overturn this. I mean, the officials were right there. They saw the wrestling match going on. And, you know, it's not like the running back, Robinson, Trey Robinson, was driving his legs for extra yards. His forward progress wasn't stopped. What a day for that man, James After Smith. After further review, the ruling on the field is confirmed. First down, Iowa State. Yeah. They take it away. Yeah. And they, that's, that is truly the definition of taking the ball away. Yeah, it's just uh, here, here comes the big boy, Frere, who's about, you know, 290 pounds. He said, I'm going to rip it out of here. I'll tell you. All these running backs, they're going to have to go to sleep with the ball under their arm at night in the dormitory. They're going to have to really work on that ball security. They're going to have to walk to class every day with a football under their arm and, and start to get familiar with it being his, his best friend. 140 yards of total offense for Iowa State compared to 337 for Nebraska. And Iowa State has the lead in the bat and the ball. That's just Jeremiah Schwartz slamming it straight ahead for about five, a little breathing room. Jim Knox, what's the latest? All right, Joel, the offensive linemen just came off the field, and they shook their head after the, another turnover. Barney Cotton, the offensive line coach, came to him and said, that's all right, guys. We're blowing open the holes. We're going to keep going at them until we get it right. You're right, Knox. You're exactly right. You know, Ricky Henry pulled and got a great block. Both guards got great blocks running those power plays. It's just the backs have to hold on to the rock, man. Second and five, ball at the 11. Schwartz, good adjustment. Short of the first down by a little less than a yard. You hear the noise in the background. This crowd, 86,000 strong, getting behind the defense. They're making a lot of noise for the defensive unit. You know what they might have to do when they get in the red zone? Put Big Sue back there in the backfield. Give him the ball. Nobody will rip it out of his hands. I'm serious. Maybe some of the black shirts are going to have to do something on the offensive side of it when they get in the red zone. Because they're thinking right now, I mean, they can sue for lack of support. Of support. Sue can sue his offense for lack of support in this one. Third and less than a yard. Option read. Tiller keeps it. He's got the first down. Whatever he needed, a uh, short one. They, Bo Pelini upset on the sideline. Maybe they want to move it before. Well, Jared Crick on the hit. Great job by Iowa State punching out a bad field position. You know, they start to drive back inside the 10 yard line. And, and, and Carl and Bo Pelini, Carl making the call there, thought that the defense could go one, two, three, and out and get the offense back with another short field, you know, to deal with, putting out of their own end zone. Iowa State punches it out of that bad field position, and now at least they'll be able to punt with some comfort. Jello looking over to the sideline with the play call. He'll keep it this time. Little lane to run if he wants to, and he will. Good wheels. Good yardage on first down, about eight. Remember, Nebraska's two possessions here in the second half started at their own 48, and the Iowa State 41. So they have basically a 52-yard field, a 41-yard field, 
and they have zero points out of the two possessions. Well, I'll tell you, Alex Alvarez, the left guard, it was a good little scheme right there by Tom Herman. He pulled Alex Alvarez, the left guard, and he gave his quarterback a, a run-pass option on the perimeter with a personal protector. And Tiller decided to tuck it and run. Nice execution. Schwartz needs two. And they stack him up, and he's got the first down after a gain of three out to the 30 as they want a two clock. They don't have a lot of things going offensively, so the, their biggest ally is when the clock is running. Well, Cameron Meredith in on that hit. They're, they were backed up going against the black shirts. The black shirts may be a little discouraged right now. They have to fight that because Iowa State strung together back-to-back -to -back chain movers 20 yards. Reverse. Give it off. It's Lenz. Lenz looking for a block from the quarterback. Center gave him a little bit, but not much. But good yardage again on a gadget play. Turner was over there. It's about eight out to the 38. Nice job again by Tom Herman, the offensive corner is a nice little rhythm calling plays. You know, he, he pulled, pulled his left guard to personal protect field. Alvarez for his quarterback killer. Now he runs the reverse, and he's got the black shirts back on their heels a little bit. Instead of on their toes, playing aggressively, get them back on their heels somewhat. And it's because the offense has turned it over five times, and they have to fight that discouragement. So far out of 15 snaps, Iowa State this half, 12 of them have been runs. And just battling, Schwartz has the first down. He ran through a couple of tackles at this line of scrimmage. Dillard was at the bottom of one of them. That's tough running for Jeremiah Schwartz. Well, the good thing he did too, Joel, he held on to that football. Because a black shirt came at him before he went to the ground with some thumping authority. Nice job, though, of, of finding a little bit of a crease. And, he, and see him as he's going to the ground, puts two hands in that football. It's Dillard. He's been their leading rusher so far. He gets about three on first down. That little option, what you call it, a zone read? Zone read. Yeah, yep. he's done a good job with it. Yeah, he's ripping the ball right out of Schwartz's belly. You know, Schwartz wants it. Until Tiller pulls it out of there, Schwartz thinks he's carrying the football. They have a nice little relationship going between the two of them, and it's up to Tiller to make the read. Watch out. Pretty soon, they scored a touchdown pass, 47-yarder, off the zone read look, play action pass. Now, all of a sudden, the linebackers and safeties are up stopping the run, throw it over their heads. Tiller on second and long. Looks at about seven for the first down. He's only four of 12 passing. There it is. Man. Zone replay action. Now looking downfield, nothing available. He'll take what he can get, and it's about three, four more yards as he dives out of bounds. Let's see where they spot it. And he did not get a good spot. They put him out at the 49. Tom Herman thinking the same thing. Zone read's been good to us. Maybe time to test him, see if the safeties are getting nosy. Nebraska does a good job for the Polinis. Bo and Carl Polini are playing their defensive responsibilities. So, you know, at that point, Paul Rhodes goes, I've got the ball in my quarterback's hands. Tiller on the perimeter who can make people miss with his feet. That's not a bad play either. You have a two-way go out there. How big is this third down for Nebraska? Huge. Third and four at the Huskers 49 as they trail by two. Short one. And a low throw popped into the air off the fingertips of Darius Darks. He was available, the sophomore from Austin, and Tiller upset with himself. Well, he should be because, but he was he was kind of disturbed a little bit with the penetration of Sue. Sue, again, a lot of things he does, they don't really go in the stat sheet that you read right away. But quarterback hurries, pressures, things of that nature are all important. And Sue hurried Tiller. If, if, if Tiller had a little bit more time, he would have thrown that ball more accurately. Brantner, most likely his biggest punt of the day. Paul waits back at the 10. Because the way their offense is going, they need to make sure Nebraska has a very long field. Over to the sideline. And it'll go out of bounds inside the 20. Let's see where they place it around the 16, 17 yard line, right at the 17. Got the job done. Let's see what the Huskers do when we come back. 32 seconds left in the third in a stranger than fiction game. 9-7 Iowa State, our Lexus playbook. Go back to the play of the game. And that was a fake punt. Just Mike Brantner, he got it done, a 25-yard run, and it set up the only touchdown of the game, Dave. Yeah, a little special teams gadget play out of the playbook. Nebraska vacating, trying to set up a wall to the right. They run the fake. Brantner says, I'm going to take advantage of this. Paul Rhodes, great call, gutsy call. The very next snap, 47-yard touchdown. Jerome Tiller to Jake Williams, the old Iowa State gadget special teams play, took advantage. At that time, Iowa State's trailing 7-3. That touchdown gave, gave him the lead on that two-play sequence. Trey Robinson for the 17 is maybe back to the 16. 
Again, Jesse Smith on top of the subject. Man, I'm Jesse Smith. Altoona, Iowa, Jesse Smith. Six feet tall. You got to come off the line of scrimmage on your knees to get under his shoulder pads. Football's about leverage, physics, low man wins. That's a low center of gravity. You know, he's six feet tall, but he's 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 a man. He's put together. He's 235 pounds on those 230 on those 235 pounds. Jesse Smith is, is all man there at middle linebacker. He has dominated play today for Iowa State. It's, and we still have 15 minutes left in Lincoln, Nebraska. So Iowa State trying to win here for the first time since 1977. And Nebraska helping them out a lot with five turnovers today. As you're watching Big 12 College Football Saturday. It's presented by Phillips HD. Big 12 College Football Saturday presented by Phillips HD. Welcome you back to Lincoln, Nebraska. Our he e harmony numbers through three. Strange, strange game. And that's the story. <laughs> five, five turn, that's the story. Case closed. That's what it's all about. Nebraska's left minimum 28 points on the field. Now, Zach Lee on second and long, and he's on his way down to make it third and even longer. So good coverage downfield because the pocket held up. Josh Raven will clean up. There was pressure collapsing on Zach Lee, Raven the senior from Fort Myers, Florida. But you're right, down the football field, Iowa State plastered every single option for Zach Lee. And in this field position, with five turnovers already, you start to think, I don't want to throw an interception. And yeah, here's look a guy. At Wally. Look Wally, at Wally Burnham. Wally Burnham has been around. <laughs> Wally Burnham, I'll tell you, in South Florida, his defenses were, were in the in the in the top 30 seven years in a row. So now on third and long. Looking one way, going back the other way. Middle screen, oh, knocked out. away. It's out. Iowa State's got it again. Amazing. Took it away from Holt. Amazing. Wow. Christopher Lyle on the hit and coming up with it, David Sims. That's Sims' second. He had an interception on a deflection. Now he falls on a fumble. Let's see what the penalty flag is. If it's on Iowa State in the secondary, it would negate it. Let's see what the call is. It's going to hold downfield. See, see what the call is. This could be big, big right here. Is it on Iowa State's defense? It's in the vicinity where it's either offensive pass interference or there's illegal contact on Iowa State unless they pick it up. Ruin on the field as the ball was caught, then fumbled and recovered by the defense. First down, Iowa State. After the play had ended, personal foul, number two, Iowa State. With the actions of the player, number two has disqualified himself. Wow. He's been ejected, James Bell. Wow. That hurts because he's been very active today as Holt put it on the ground. Wow. James Smith lost his composure. You saw that reaction. That sums it all up for him because he's had a big day out there. And he's ejected. And, and, and that is, that's tough. Okay, catch is made. Uh, the way they're tackling Iowa State, I mean, but Banks goes in there, or, or excuse me, strip, strips him from behind is Christopher Lyle, smacks him, and, and, and let's see, let's see what happens. There's the late hit right there, hit him right across the smush, and, uh, and you have the ejection. Mendoza does not retaliate after Smith hits him right in the head. So take it back now to the Iowa State, or make it the Nebraska 37. And this is the best field position and the first time they started in plus territory. Going to be Jeremiah Schwartz. And it was not a real clean sequence anyway between quarterback and running back as it was bobbled a little bit by Tiller. All they need is a field goal to go up by more than the precarious position they're in right now because of the blocked extra point. And Rod Serling is not done writing the script. I mean, the beat goes on. Six. Six giveaways by Nebraska. Iowa State, 100% ball security. That's the difference in, the, in a two-point football game. Tiller has Lenz flanking him in the backfield, the wide receiver, who comes out in the flat. He throws the short one underneath to Hamilton. Down to the 31, short of the first down by about four. Dillard on top of the play. The last time Nebraska lost this many, I'm talking about fumbles, as Grant Mahoney gets ready for a potential field goal try. It was in Ames, Iowa. So something about the Cyclones because they lost six fumbles back in November of 1976 at Iowa State. They've given away five fumbles today, plus a pick. 
and Mahoney's already hit from 52 yards. They're already in his field goal range. Remember, he's one of seven kickers in the country that's hit from 50 more than once. Now Tiller needs uh -oh. full look out on his back. It was Barry Turner. So Barry Turner forced the miss. Will Mahoney be able to hit the long field goal and make it a five-point game? Here comes Turner off the edge. Nothing fancy. Just beat him off the edge and make the hit. And really, that ball could have gone anywhere. The ball is bouncing in Iowa State's favor. That ball falls harmlessly to the ground instead of a Nebraska defender. He missed three last week, 30, 35, and 50. He's already at a 52-yarder. This is a 49-yard attempt. Blocked. And it's blocked again. Picked up. Loose ball going the other way. Sue got the block. Yep. Look out. Husker down the sideline. It is brought back That's by Sean call. Fisher. That's a horse Sean call. Fisher with the return. Man. They celebrate Lincoln. Okay, on a long field goal, 49 yards, you have to try to drive the football. It's hard to get the elevation. Sue is going to get the penetration inside again. And here comes Sue. He gets the beat, big right mucker on it. And the black shirts say, hey, offense, if you can't score, we'll try to score. Look at Sue, the athleticism, to block that thing. The double thump, kicker's nightmare. The second thump, man, and... and did they have to do a better job of blocking down inside because Sue will blow you up on that extra point and field goal rush. They've got it at the Iowa State 35. Mendoza. Nothing doing on the outside. It was Josh Ray with the strong side backers staying at home. Only a gain of a yard down to the 34. Don't forget, they only need a field goal to take the lead. So that is the fifth block kick of Sue's career. So it's not out of the ordinary for this guy to make that kind of penetration because he's right between the center and the guard. And, and you know, he'll, he'll make plays on special teams. He'll make plays in the defensive line. He's in the short yardage goal line formation offensively. Sue is all football player. Michael O'Connell, number 37 in the white jersey, in for Smith. Robinson, right away, racked up. Man. Wow. Christopher Lyle, the senior from Waldorf, Maryland. It was almost like he was in the offensive backfield for the set. Well, now Loss you have of about four. Joel, now you have the offensive line with an assignment error. And their inconsistency has been apparent over the last couple of weeks. But you got a, a, a blown assignment up front. Nobody blocks Lyle. There's a mental error. You have a free runner to the running back. That's that's the kind of thing the offensive line's doing well for three series. Then they, they brain cramp. The quarterback doing well. Then he overthrows or deflected intercept. Wide receiver drops. I mean, this it's amazing. It's amazing. It's amazing. Third and 13. They're out of field goal range right now. Don't forget. Lee underneath drops. Niles Paul. Do you believe it? Yeah, he took his eyes off the ball. Niles Paul was looking to the inside to see where he was going to make his first cut before he caught the ball. Watch him. It's the bottom of the screen here. Look, look, look at peak. Starts to peak. Oh, I got to catch the ball. Look the ball into your hands. Don't start to, to try to look down the football field and see where Leonard Johnson is. Amazing. They get nothing out of that outstanding effort by Sue. Nothing. It's amazing. Josh Lenz should not touch it. Alex Henry will try to put it out of bounds inside the 10. It comes over to the near side. Did he get too much of it? No. Good job. Where do they put it? Mark it outside of the five at the six. So Iowa State in a hole, but they're still leading by two. Nine to seven in Lincoln. Thank you, John. Well, welcome back to Lincoln. It's at the six of Iowa State. They want to keep it to the ground, of course. They're going to chew up some clock. A couple of first downs just for breathing room purposes. They can take about another four minutes off the clock. Redshirt freshman Jerome Tittle has taken care of it today. Jeremiah Schwartz, another redshirt freshman out of Orlando in the absence of the league's leading running back, Alexander Robinson. They lose off 105 yards a game without him in there. It was and Dominican Sue again, the senior from Portland, on the hit. Yeah. Maybe a yard on the game. Superman. He is something else, boy.
He doesn't need to go into a phone booth to change into his costume. He throws on the corn husker uniform, and nobody can block him. He's big time. A couple of good ones next week. Sioux, Colorado in Boulder. Dave will be in Oklahoma. K State supplies with the Big 12 North. Schwartz over to the left side, squeezing through out to the 11. Crick on his back and one in his neck. Because yeah. of the sophomore from Cozad, Nebraska. You know, Joel, as well as the black shirts have played, they have forced no turnovers. Iowa State has six takeaways. The black shirts right now are probably thinking this would be our opportune time to get a takeaway. And let's pick it up, whatever it is, and score ourselves. Let's not rely on the offense. They have self-destructed in the scoring zone. God, I got to move my quarterback on this play. Got to roll it. Third and about six, almost seven. Little lane to the right. Taylor makes gone. a miss. Look out. First down across the 20. And they had him in the backfield. He escaped. 6-3. I told you, not 200 pounds. Good wheels. They haven't asked him to really do much at all throwing the football. And a good call by Tom Herman. Run the quarterback draw. And this that's what this is. It's a design quarterback draw. He steps up. Turner can't get him. Now he's going to go. And he splits Sue and Crick. There's just enough of a lane there where he's got some acceleration and splits those guys before they can close on him. I told you to roll the quarterback. <laughs> he leads him in rushing. 16 carries for 58 yards. Passing, 5 for 15. Yet, 9 to 7. Schwartz pounding it for a yard as the rain begins to fall. So two around there, but he wasn't the first one in on the stop. Give Schwartz credit. Every second, the second that ticks off the clock now, advantage Iowa State. Absolutely. They, they want to melt that clock, and it's it's their ally, and it's, it's Nebraska's enemy. And now you throw in a little precipitation, and the Nebraska offense has already spit the bit six times. Now you start thinking about a greasy pig. Wow. I mean, all of a sudden, it, it really starts to favor Iowa State. But Iowa State has to handle the slick rock right now. They have to have ball security, which they've done all game long. And it's second and long. Tiller calling it on his own. Then squirming free from Dillard for a couple of extra. Out to the 27. So another critical third down coming up for Iowa State. No matter what happens in this football game, how big has this been for Iowa State? Their starting quarterback, not available. Their conference leading running back, not available. And they're beating Nebraska in the fourth quarter, 9-7, to seven, by taking the football away six times and not giving it up one time. 8-15 and counting. First down here. They can take another two minutes off the clock. Moving the pocket. And on the comeback route of first down, it's taken in by Marquise Hamilton. He's got the first down by a good yard or two. So that moves the chains. Uh, Mukamara on the coverage. And you look at Nebraska under Bo Pelini. They're 14 and 1 when they lead at any point in the fourth quarter. They've outscored the opposition 65 to 16 in the fourth quarter so far. Will they score today? Tremendous throw on the run. Good route. Excellent throw. Tiller's confidence growing every snap. He's playing against the black shirts and executing. Talk about a hostile environment. This is tough. For your first career start, Jeremiah Schwartz made a miss in the backfield. That was a tough yard. <laughs> He'll bring up second and long, but it keeps the clock moving. Now can the Cyclones run out the clock? And I get to that thought as we remind you, first down marker brought to you by Overstock.com. At Overstock.com, our award-winning customer service will make you feel at home with the O. Well, hardly any O today for Iowa State. They didn't need it, though. Nebraska helped them. Their defense helped them. But they're slugging it out with the black shirts. I mean, Iowa State right now is not doing anything fancy. They're just slugging it out with them. Quickly out to Lenz. Lenz blocked from the wide receiver. Another first down. And how about the work downfield of Marquise Williams, or Marquise Hamilton? Outstanding. Wide receivers, when they don't have the football in their hands, what do they do? Watch what he does. He's got the ball in the perimeter. That's a good job. Finish, fit, finish, finish, finish. Stay after it. He sustained contact. Denard could not separate from him. Move the chains. Nebraska has two timeouts left. How good has it been for Paul Rhodes in this, this school? Uh, they've won only five games over the previous two seasons. They're looking for win number five today on a first down. Schwartz, Sue's got him. Sue slowed him down. <laughs> he held him by the jersey from behind. Okay. That's right, tough. Right now, Iowa State has 
basically exercise demons. Ten straight losses last year to finish the season. That ended in the opener when they won. They had a 17 road game losing streak. That ended when they went on the road for the first time against Kent State. They lost 11 straight Big 12 games. That ended when they beat Baylor last week. They haven't won here since 1977. That's the biggest demon. Will it be exercised? Second and nine for Titter. Going out on a flanker screen. And it's complete. So the man who caught the touchdown, Jake Williams, with a flag at the end of the play. They're going to call a hold. Yeah. And it'll Side be, judge came in. And it'll be at the point of the infraction. On and the I, block. And I'm sure they'll move him back. Holding. Number 82, offense. Ten-yard penalty. Repeat second down. Well, we talked about Marquise Hamilton. What a great job he did on the other side of the field in front of his own bench blocking. But watch him right here as he works down the football field on the receiver screen. He'll reach out and grab. Ooh. They called the hold. That's a little dicey. He never... He never really got his hands on him. I mean, I think when he had the hands outside the framework, he released them. That's dicey. That's tough. Yep. 540 left in regulation. 9-7 Iowa State. Now second, and by their standards, forever. Titter on the quarterback draw. And staying at home, it was Jared Crick. He didn't bite at all, did he? No push-up field. He just stayed right at the line and got a good angle on Jerome Tiller. I swear, Sue and Crick, they feed off each other. Sue gets a lot of attention. You know, so now you man up on Crick, and Crick can beat you with one man blocking. You can't double everybody. That is a nice tandem of tall, size up front, and, turn, and, and there's over 6'6", six, six, over 6'5", six, over 300 pounds, and athletes. Play of the game, by the way, here with five minutes for both Iowa State and the Blackshirts. Middle screen, lens, the wide receiver won't get there. It'll be a punt from the 45. Who, Sue again. Exactly. Who makes the hit? Sue recognizes the alley screen, and he puts on his linebacker hat, Joel. Yeah, but the key, Dave, they held on to the ball for almost seven minutes. But watch Sue right here. He's going to separate and say, I'll retrace my steps, and when he hits you, you're done. You're hit. But they did a great job of melting clock and moving the, moving the football, moving the chains. All of a sudden, Nebraska, instead of short field, they're going to have long field to negotiate. And they're going to work the clock. That's why Brantner's waiting. A real intelligent play. Yeah, work it all the way down. Yeah, will they take the five-yard mark off? Yes. They have that kind of confidence in their putter. And in fact, they won't take the five. Instead, they'll use a timeout here. So two timeouts remaining for each side. But Iowa timeout. State held on to the football for better than seven minutes. We'll be right back to Lincoln. Iowa State 9 to 7, 4 11 to play in Lincoln. And our Keystone Line always smooth moment. Well, it's smooth when you've got him on your team. And that's Endemicon Sue, who's been all over the field today. And boy, one sack he got on Tiller. When he comes in on Tiller here, my AC joint hurts this time. It wasn't a sack, just a hurry. Yeah, and, and what does he do, too? He shows his short space explosion and power by blocking a couple of kicks. I mean, he is so, his hips are so powerful, they can't block down inside and keep him out of there. And then, I mean, in space, he's, he tackles and, and, and moves almost like a linebacker, but he's 6'6", 300 pounds, and he's just scratching the surface of his potential. He has got so much more upside, and he has got a great work ethic. That's the best part of him. Brandner's biggest punt of the day. Will he keep it away from Paul? Angles to the boundary into the win. Paul stays away from the fair catch, and he's buried right at the 20-yard line. So it's all set up for Nebraska. They're down by two, trying to avoid their second consecutive conference home loss when we come back. Big 12 College Football Saturday from Lincoln, Nebraska continues. Presented by Phillips HD in our direct TV game summary. Well, Iowa State capitalizing on a lot of mistakes. Running the clock now. Six turnovers for Nebraska. Five of those fumbles. So Nebraska with 339, making 342 in total yards to 190. 
for Iowa State. They hold Texas Tech to 259 last week, lose it 31 to 10. They're holding Iowa State to 190 yards. They're losing 9 to 7. And this is the ball game for Nebraska now. Two timeouts and they've got it at their own 19. Plenty of pocket protection. And the dump off underneath. Hello holds on. And he's got a first down to the 30. So you got to hold your breath on everybody lately for Nebraska just holding on to a wet football. Exactly. Secure the football. And remember, all you need is a field goal. And Henry last year, he kicked a 57-yarder against Colorado in crunch time. That was huge in that football game. If it comes down to Henry, depending on the distance, what will Nebraska think? Two timeouts left. He's working into the win. Leon first down from the 30. Pick up the blitz off the edge. It's Paul underneath. And he's got another first down. Well, they're doing a good job, Joel, of working the sideline. Iowa State should try to make Nebraska funnel the routes back inside. Remember, the clock stops on a first down it's for them to uh, move the chains. But getting out of bounds like that is a big issue once they get into the two, final two minutes of this game. So uh, at some point, Iowa State's going to start to funnel them back inside. Light rain continues to fall in Lincoln. Temperature in the low 40s. Got a first down for the Huskers. 3.08 left in the contest. Pressure coming from the backside and thrown away by Lee. So the heat came from the outside from Lyle. Did a good job to force the issue. He did a nice little power rush. And Lyle made him throw it away. So it's, it's like clocking the football. It's like spiking it. Basically throw it away and live for another down. Don't put your team in jeopardy with a poor decision. And here he comes. And boy, grabbing the grill. And it is fortunate. And, and, and he looked right away at the official and said, man, he, he absolutely grabbed me and, and ripped my face mask. Big Mike Smith, the left tackle, got in the grill a while and got away with it. Blake Lock coming down on Zach Lee. Man, almost movement on the right side for Nebraska. Middle of the field available. Oh. Too tall. Intercepted. Wow. O'Connell's going the other way. Mike O'Connell and another turnover by Nebraska may cost them their second straight conference game at home. I'll tell you what, that ball's got to be caught. Gillen just, the ball splits his hands. I mean, that's a catchable football. And I know what's going to happen. Zach Lee is going to get blamed for this loss. There's been a lot of drops like that and, and balls that should have been caught, as you mentioned, Dave. Uh, yeah, uh, you know, is he responsible for all the fumbles? Is he responsible for this interception? I say that's a catchable football. Tough catch, but you got to catch the pig. And disbelief. Yeah, there's still 85, 86,000. But disbelief around this stadium. Tiller making his first career start. Subbing for Austin Arnott, calling his own number, trying to bounce it outside. Got a good play. Balls it's, out. Well, the ball was down. Yep. They're saying he was down but, as Asante, but back to the pick and the miss. Well, O'Connell comes up with the deflection. Gilliland gets two hands on it, slightly behind him. As he tips it airborne, O'Connell, who's in for James Smith, who got ejected, steps up large. How about that? You know, he says, OK, I got to take more snaps. I'm up to it. Only Huge two time, away. only two timeouts left for Nebraska. So a first down could end the game for Iowa State. Jeremiah Schwartz, he'll give it to him this time. And he won't be able to get any yardage. In fact, lost a yard back at the 49. And now Nebraska will stop it. And this is the ball game for Nebraska, basically, with 2.04 to play. You know, I, Paul Rhodes has to be almost stunned himself he thought you know we need to be plus two to win this football game how about plus seven never in his wildest dreams did Bo Pelini think he'd be minus seven and never did Paul Rhodes think he'd be plus seven that's the first snap offensively of the day we should have known Helu putting it on the ground yeah Helu had, had had issues and then red zone deflection James Smith comes up with the football he could be, he's going to be huge here as well as he recovers the football in the end zone once Leonard Johnson separated from the, from the football, Helen loses control of it again. Man, and the running backs just not able to ball security. Frere rips the football away from the possession of Trey Robinson. 
just just an incredible effort by by Iowa State. Every single snap attacking the football. Look at all the white jerseys around the football when that ball is airborne. Paul Rhodes exceptionally proud of his football team. They came in here without their starting quarterback and, and leading conference rusher. And here's what they're doing. Now the ball game. Third and nine. Schwartz up the middle and they'll leave it up to the defense. Nebraska will stop the clock for a final time and use their last time out with a minute 59 to play as Sue at the bottom of the pile. So seven turnovers today. And there's there's Henry. Is he going to be involved or can they get it all the way down the field and take the pressure off the place kicker for the Huskers because there's a lot of wind in the ballpark today. We saw the second half kickoff blown off the tee. It is raining. It is windy. It is cold. And right but now seven turnovers Dave the most since 1972 when they had eight and that was against Iowa State as well in Ames and right now they're substituting late they're bringing the punt return team on the field they had their defense out in the field till the very last minute here Iowa State declares they're going with their punt team do you heat them up do you get after it do you, do you try to block another kick they block an extra point block the field goal do they try to block this punt or do they drop back and return and try to get some yards there Can Brander take Paul out of the equation and put it out of bounds on the sideline it's a high one short one and Paul with a fair catch back at about the 17. So Nebraska has plenty of time minute 53 to play and here's what's at stake with the rain falling and disbelief still there by this group that's in shock. Kansas State at 2-1. Nebraska was the favorite. Everybody felt they were going to win the Big 12 North this year. After what they did down the stretch, 9-4 last year. Kansas, Nebraska, Missouri 0-2. Taking on Texas tonight. Looks bleak for the Tigers. Iowa State tried to get to 2-2 with a win today. Well, this game... By this defense, though, that's the story now. This game is a microcosm of the season. Conference championship caliber defense. Inconsistent sporadic offense. Seven giveaways? Zach Lee, uh -oh. and it's up for grabs because the receiver, Paul, ran past the point that Lee thought he was going to turn around and come back on the football. But back to, you were talking about Wally Burnham, Paul Rhodes, defensive coordinator. Wally told us earlier this week, he goes, we don't have a lot of speed right. on our defensive unit. Not a lot of team speed on defense, but boy, they play really hard with a lot of passion. And, and they make good, they're good with their keys, their eyes are good. Now, long time to look it over, popped into the air, and there is Christopher Lyle again. Wow. Now third and long. And you know, you, you, you look at this Iowa State football team. Their best defensive lineman, Rashawn Parker, out with an ACL. Lyle says, I'll be the guy. And, and that's just, you know, if, if you're not going to get the quarterback, get in a passing lane and get your hands up, and you might get lucky. And that time, Lyle was blocked too well. I mean, he got stymied, but he got his hand up. Third and ten. Pocket protection. There for Lee, going for the bundle. O'Connell's there. Battered away by the safety, intended for Niles Paul. Very smart job. Don't tip it airborne. That Knock it down. Good. Knock it down. Spike it. If you tip the football, it could come down into a Nebraska hand. It's now it's fourth down. It's the last, the last lot life for Nebraska. Get up and, and spike it and, and get the ball to the turf. Here's the ball game. Fourth and ten for Zach Lee and Nebraska back at their own 17. Ton of time over the middle, intercepted. Wow. Appropriate ending for Iowa State in a shocker in Lincoln. It'll be their first win, and the player of the game, Jesse Smith. It's fitting. He comes away with it. First wow. win in Lincoln for Iowa State since 1977. And Frere got the pressure on the quarterback. Zach Lee got hit as he threw that football. Frere hit him. Watch Frere right here in the inside rush. A little bit of a twist. Here comes Frere. Boom. As the ball's released, he hits him. Jesse Smith, he's made excellent drops. I'm not even sure Zach saw him. I'm not sure Zach Lee saw Jesse Smith at six feet tall. But, man, what a game by Jesse Smith. A walk-on. A walk-on. Now the captain and making so many plays today. Congratulations, Jesse Smith. He was honorable mention all Big 12 last year. He's trying to be the Big 12 Defensive Player of the Year this season off this one game alone. And what a performance. Do you think there's, I know it's early in the conference scheduled day because we have games right. later today and tonight, but you think he's at least co-defensive player of the week? I, I, <laughs> at least? I'd like to see the guy that had a bigger impact than Jesse Smith did. Man, he had that interception. He, the other, one of the other interceptions, he deflected airborne. I mean, he Second was all over the football field. What a football player.
So a dejected 86,000 head to the exits. Stunned. With a light rain falling in Lincoln. Paul Rhodes, every single demon has now been exercised, including not winning at Nebraska since 1977. And you talk about a team overcoming adversity. You know, the injury to Parker. You know, they've had they've had other injuries that they've had to deal with. You know, they lost one of their best wide receivers, Darius Reynolds, to a fractured fibula during practice. He doesn't have his starting quarterback. He doesn't have the conference leading running back. And they come in and beat Nebraska. That is overcoming adversity that you can't believe. How proud must Paul Rhodes be of this football team? And tell me they're not Dead a ball candidate. Offside, number 93 defense. Five-yard penalty. Still third down. You can see the frustration. Sue just picked up the mark off. And, and you talked about breaking the Big 12 losing streak. And that meant so much to him last week to win at home and stop an 11-game losing streak in conference play. And it's all over. They can celebrate. It is official. Iowa State has shocked the football world today. They come into Lincoln and defeat the Nebraska Cornhuskers for the first time in Lincoln in 32 years. Now they got a big assist from Nebraska. Nebraska, I've never seen more self-inflicted wounds. Eight giveaways. But I'll tell you what, Paul Rhodes and his defensive football team had a lot to do with that. And he is thankful, and he should be. He's almost, I bet he's almost speechless right now. They've already matched the win total, Dave, of the previous two seasons in his first year. And this is just a little past the midway point well, of this, his first year. This football team lost 10 straight games last year, Joel. They won their first two, lost 10 straight. Did not win a conference game last year. Let's head downstairs. Noxie. Coach, congratulations. You play in Nebraska, and for the first time since 1977, you guys come out victorious. Let me tell you something. We win this football game by two points, and they got eight turnovers and we got zero. You think they didn't coach a hell of a game and play a heck of a game? I'm so proud of our football team and how they played. Talk about coming in and right at game time, Arden not, not playing, the leading rusher in the Big 12, Robinson, out of the game. And you told me before the game, in order for you guys to win this thing, it's going to be a total team effort. And, and it was. Let me tell you, I got a whole bunch of guys that are sick as can be in there. I got guys in the locker room puking. I got a guy that broke his leg in the first half. We take him out. I've got one heck of a football team. I'm damn proud to be their coach. When you came in here also, you knew you'd have to take chances. A huge play was that fourth down fake punt. You know what? Before that, the defense stands up and makes a stop. They're driving. They're going in to score. They're going in to make it 14 points, and our defense bows up, and we get a stop. Then we get the turnover and, and, and uh, a nice momentum swing and then the big touchdown right after. I guess it's safe to say this so far is your biggest victory here at Iowa State. I, I think it would be at the top. <laughs> Congratulations, <laughs> Coach. Very much. Joel? Safe to say, especially when you beat a team over the last 20 years that's only 127 and 17 in their home ballpark. So a stunner to say the least. The biggest upset so far in the college football season. Nebraska, huge favorites. And that's everything that's good about college football. We just saw that team going over to the sideline of the fans that made the trip from Ames and drove here. And they went straight over as Paul Rhodes is into the corner of the stadium with the Iowa State fans as well. But to see those young men celebrate with everybody that made the trip, that was special. Born just down the road. I mean, he's a local. Paul yeah, Rhodes is a Ankeny. local. He's, yeah, he's, Ankeny. Ten, he's ten miles away. He's right down the road. And, and, and he is leading Iowa State back to glory. It is one of the great stories in college football early this year. Five wins already for the Iowa State Cyclones.